couple of our veterans are here to cover the action on pit road really one of the stories of today's event maybe a changing of the guard or at least a precursor to that in our starting lineup today the names you're familiar with dale earnhardt rusty wallace mark martin ernie Irvin, sterling marlin well they're back a ways in the starting lineup today the front row made up of a couple of nascar's new guard in fact not very long ago you would have found these two drivers featured in our saturday broadcast of the champion spark plug 300 Joe Nemechek on the outside pole, Jeff Gordon, the pole qualifier. Standing by to talk to the pole sitter today is our Randy Pemberton. Well, thank you much, uh, Rick Benjamin. You're absolutely right. These are two guys that are stars on the rise here in the Winston Cup circuit. And of course, uh, Jeff, only your second Coca-Cola 600 last year. You started deep in the field, but had a great run, finished second. What can we expect here tonight uh, when we're going to start in the sunlight here and then go into the nighttime? Well, you know, I don't think that the fastest car is going to be fast right now uh, unless they can make a lot of changes under under pit stop. So, you know, our strategy is to go out there and uh, play it real calm, uh, ride around for about four or five hundred miles and, and be there. You know, we got to be there at the end. And that's something we haven't been doing lately. And it hasn't been any of our faults We're just having some bad luck. So we need some good breaks. A lot of luck would do a lot for this team today because we've been running great all year long. Right, good luck tonight. In the Coca Cola Thank you. Also on the front row today, a driver who just a few years ago was running mini stock cars in the state of Florida. Former Bush Grand National Champion Joni Macek on the outside of row one, the editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine, Dr. Dick Bergman, set to talk to Joe. And 30-year-old Joe Nimichek has never started a Coca-Cola 600. In fact, this is only your second ever Winston Cup start here. The thundering herd is behind you. Butterflies? Oh, a little bit. You know, I got the got the cold chills. You know, it's uh, this is just great, especially to be here on the front row. Meineke, Chevrolet, Larry Hedrick Motorsports. It's a great day for racing. Long, long race, 600 miles. Are you concerned about fatigue? Well, the biggest thing is uh, uh, I think I'm in pretty good shape. I'm just going to have to make myself drink a lot of fluids today because it's hot. Going to have to uh, sweat a lot in the cars and uh, hopefully it'll be around at the end. And as we talk to Joe Nemechek, we see John Andretti has just arrived at the Speedway. He's just climbed off the helicopter. You're familiar with the story. Andretti with top 10 qualifying spots in Indianapolis in here. He finished 10th at Indianapolis today. He's going to try to back it up with a run to victory here in the Coca-Cola 600 in the Billy Hagen Chevrolet, the 14 car. Andretti with a top 10 qualifying effort here. There's some question about whether he'll keep that spot because he missed the driver's meeting. NASCAR has a rule if you miss that driver's meeting you start at the rear of the field so we'll find out a little more about that whether they waive that rule for John Andretti or not now we talked earlier about NASCAR's well, I hate to call him the old guard but the older guard or the veterans the defending and six time Winston Cup champion is bidding for two victories make it three victories in a row here at the Coca-Cola 600 we're talking about no one else but the intimidator Dale Earnhardt and we're our third member of our over the wall gang today a driver who's leading the Bush Grand National point standings we're glad to have Kenny Wallace back today and he's talking to Dale Earnhardt. Kenny? Thank you guys. I'm with Dale Earnhardt. Dale, you won this Coke 300 six times. You were the first night winner. Uh, you got some young guys starting in front. I wish I could be here racing with you. Do you think anything's going to be different tonight than has been? All right, Kenny, you know how racing goes. Uh, you can win all the races in the world, and all of a sudden you can't do anything right. So we're going to see what we can do. This is awful good racetrack for us. Our car's running good. And, you know, being the winner last year is uh, being the winner last year, but you got to do it for 600 more miles. And, it's a tough race. Uh, you got a lot of, you know, tough competitors in it, two of your brothers. And uh, one of them I'm really, you know, have good battles with. But uh, still, it's going to be a good show. I think it's going to be a good race today and tonight. And uh, may the best man win, maybe driving a black number three. Thanks a lot, Dale. That's the most I've ever heard Dale Earnhardt talk. As he gets strapped in here, he's put some knee pads, keeping his foot warm and yeah, cold. I'm glad to see John Andretti make it. That is a story. Back to you guys. One of the great stories in American racing in recent years, John Andretti trying a heretofore thought impossible double. Randy Pemberton is with John Andretti. Well, John Andretti, a, a tremendous flight down here very quickly. He looks very composed, very calm. Great run today, John. I know you got to be do this real quick. You're strapping in, but a little bit of strategy tonight. <laughs> How you try, feeling? Just try and hang out there and do 600 miles and hope for a real good thing. Are you tired? Well, you know, I mean, 500 miles is one thing, but, you know, it's going to be a tough race here. Good luck, John. John Andretti going from the nine hole supposedly today. We'll see if he's going to get to start there or not. One of the great stories here today. Here to call the action for us today. Two gentlemen who've seen more of these races take the green than I think the rest of us combined. Our own Ken Squire and the king, Richard Penn. 
Yeah, but he always had the better seat. Well, I had an interesting seat anyway, that's for <laughs> sure. 82 degrees, uh, humidity about 37%. That temperature's come down about six or seven degrees. Cloud cover in and out. Looks like a perfect time for a race. No possibility of rain, they are saying, Richard. Now, what about this fluctuation between starting in daytime than running at well, night? Well, that was one thing that we didn't get. Uh, it rained us out the other night, and we didn't get any night running with these cars. We, although we run them, a lot of them last week. Uh, we didn't get any night running. Nobody knows really what to expect. Uh, you know, most of the time the cars tighten up as it gets cooler, but you don't know, you know, how tight are we going to start with the car, you know, how loose we're going to start with it. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, Sterling Marlin has said that running 180 miles an hour, and recall that that front row, front three, or 180 mile an hour cars on this mile and a half is a little like flying a jet airplane inside of an auditorium, Richard. <laughs> I don't know. I'd say I've never run 180 miles in yeah. years, so, but I've been to some of them that uh, was the same thing. It's sort of like running Bristol, you know, right. and uh, that's that's what this racetrack's getting like. Is it a handful? It, it is for that long. I, you know, you go out and run three or four laps, you don't think anything about it, but then you say, man, we've got to be out here four and a half hours doing this kind of stuff, you know, run 170, 80 mile an hour, then uh, it's kind of tiring from time to time. And Richard has been the one to say over and over again it's never the speed that gets you it's that sudden stop that's the whole deal but you know here again that speeds are relevant it's the time that it takes us to get around the racetrack and so if you set out and run you know the longest uh, deal or the shortest deal in the time then that's you're gonna be the winner less than a lap to the commencement 400 laps the distance 600 miles for a million two 43 cars and then ready because he missed the driver's meeting goes shotgun goes to the rear you're now riding with uh, three of our onboard cameras. We have several more for you today. Jeff Gordon, the pole sitter up there, taking the field down the back straightaway. And you're with Mark Martin now, who'll be starting in that 11th position, the uh, pyro camera. And Jeff Bodine, Jeff Bodine ready for a ramble this afternoon to try to get himself another victory. He won the Winston Select the other night. Great victory for him. They're into turn three, getting set for a start. Got to really think about taking a little easy here this first part of this race, huh, Richard? Well, you got to figure there's going to be three or four races tonight. Uh, you know, starting out right now, it's it's kind of warm, and then it'll start getting cooler, and everybody's got to adjust. So everybody will figure on that, I guess. 24 degree banking. Right. About to be attacked for the first time. There they go. All down into the first corner. They still look like a left right now because they all not strung out, but it won't take them long to strung out. Where do you collect high gear out there? Well, you get that before you get to the first corner. So you, you are ready to go when you're you get low. to the first corner. You're running wide open. A lot of times you can go in faster because you accelerate. Bodine scoots down to the inside, tries to find the hole. Nemechek up on the outside, and you're riding with Bodine as they come by for the first time, and he had a handful of those bumps up in turn four. Take a, another look at that when they go back up through there this next time. Schrader looking good, stays in the bottom, and Nemechek just hangs it out on the outside and stays there, runs wheel to wheel. See, this is what's going to be interesting because uh, he's got on the Hoosier tires, and well, he's, he's got on Hoosier tires on both sides <laughs> of him right now. Three wide in the second lap. It's Bodine down to the inside. Nemechek fading back a little. Gordon taking a big fade back to fourth. Coming off those bumps, and it is Jeff Bodine in first. Nemechek in second. Bumper camera. From Jeff Bodine, looking back at number 41, Nemechek. 24 degree banking here. There comes Brother up in there to see what's going on. Another Bodine. Brett Bodine on the bottom of the racetrack, number 26, goes into second spot. There you see Rick Nass now getting underneath Jeff Gordon in the one. It's Jeff Bodine in front. For a while the other night in qualifying, these two Bodines were side by side. Schrader continues to roll up through. Looks like he wants to collect the front of this field. Meanwhile, look at Mark Martin make his move. Roof cam on Mark Martin's number six going down the back straightaway. Working lap four. Here's that turn four, and you can see them get that ripple yeah, it's, in there. It's pretty rough coming off the four, especially if you have to move up a little bit, and that's the way they're going to have to run tonight probably is up in the middle of the track from there on up. They're still racing a whole lot on, all the way on back in the back. Nobody's really got settled down yet, so uh, they'll run another four or five laps, and then they'll get in line. 
six cars up in front. Then it's about a half second back. There goes Brett Budine in the Kenny Bernstein car down to the bottom. Trying to put the Quaker State colors in front of the next side car on the outside. The Bodines wheel to wheel out of four at 175, 80 miles an hour to the strike. On board with Mark Martin at roof camera giving you the shot as he goes for second place. Mark Martin hugging the bottom of the racetrack looking for that hole for second and back comes Jeff Gordon the pole sitter just 22 years of age and what a racer he is Martin coming up for second I guess nobody told these people this was a 600 mile race <laughs> did they have a driver's meeting today well, I don't yeah I think they did but <laughs> I think they forgot it the time they got to the race cars though Rick, that, that's what's good about the Winston Cup races. No matter whether it's a small race, short race, big race, they're going to race for it. Brett Bodine out in front has a 10 car length advantage for the moment as they're too wide behind him, and this will give him a chance to break away a bit more. Only the second race that Brett Bodine has led this year. Jeff Bodine in second. Here's Martin coming out of the just and settling back in third, and Rick Mass making the move on the outside. Ward Burton in the 31, ride seventh. Ricky Rudd right there with him. In eighth, Greg Sachs up in there for ninth. Look at Joe Nemechek. Set a new overall record out here in qualifying yeah, he, for Winston he's Open. Just, he's been good all week long, in fact, two weeks. And, uh, you know, he doesn't run low. He just runs from the middle of the racetrack up. He's got a good groove, a good steady groove. Not that many people in his groove, so uh, he, can, he can run good, consistent laps that way. So it's the Bodine brothers, one and two with Rick Nass now in third, car number one. He's been trying to get it together here, get some good finishes of recent. And it's beginning to pay off right now. On board with Jeff Gordon in six. Something happened to Mark there. You know, they just got a good running start at him. I don't know if he's going to decide to let him go a little bit or not. Gordon back now to the sixth spot. And Ward Burton pulling up from seventh. There's been a change, however, behind him. Ernie Urban is rolling. He's into eighth. Ricky Rudd now in ninth, back to tenth. Follows the 77 car. Greg Saxon to 77. Looks like he wants to go after Rudd as well. But here's the story. That lead that had built up to about 10, 12 car lengths, gone away for the lead. It's now a three-car battle as Rick Mass hugs the outside and tries to find some running room. And he's, Rick's coming on strong now. He's got him a good groove now. If he gets him down on the outside and he's got the whole outside, he can really go. Rick Mass pulling up. It's Mass to the number one on the high side and Jeff Bodine down low. Brett Bodine in first. Needs to dispatch him right here. What he doesn't need is to run side by side and let Brett get away again. Now, he's not going to go very far. <laughs> number one is flat going through that three and four oh, corner, and he's really making time. Take a look at this battle. Four. Jeff Gordon has it. Mark Martin trying to take it away. Roof cam here, right down on the bottom at 175. Nemechek falls back into six. Ward Burton trying to pull up on this threesome as they come around to complete lap number 12. Green so far over all 43 cars in the early going of the Coca-Cola 600. Expect to be done about 9, 9.30 Eastern tonight. In this $1.2 million test. I tell you what, they're not getting strung out as quick as what I thought they would. They are, everybody's just right there on each other all the way back to 34th place. Or so. Here is Mass looking for the outside. I think he wants to go for the lead. He's going. Gone. Brett Bodine first, Rick Mass second, Jeff Bodine third, Jeff Gordon in fourth. Rick Mass now first. So that changed as they came down by. Went into the back straight away. Mass for the moment has the lead. Brett Bodine in second. I believe that's Mass first time this year up in front. 
First race Mass has led since Richmond back in March. John Andretti with Bill Elliott on the tail end of the field. Trying to strike a match here and come up through. That's the 37th position. See, they moved around Musgrave, taking their time. Long way to go. No sense getting in a no, no hurry sense getting out here this right time. now. All I got to do is run a good steady pace, and I'll let none of them catch up with me. You see that Elliott car, the Junior Johnson car, fading up the track, and here comes John Andretti back down on the inside again. Remember, he came from 43rd. This is for 36, or for 37th, and he's got it. See if he can hold on to it in turn one. Moving away from the field. Mast in first. Jeff Bodine in second. Brett Bodine in third. Staying fourth is Mark Martin. Jeff Gordon fifth. Nemechek sixth. Ward Burton seventh. And it's Ernie Urban in eighth at the end of 16 laps. 20 laps are complete. Hoosiers running first and second out here. And that's what they have for shoes on Rick Mast and Jeff Bodine at the present time. As you arrive with the Pyrol camera on board the Valvoline car of Mark Martin in third. Brett Bodine is fourth. Jeff Gordon fifth. Nema check sixth. Ward Burton stays seventh at the present time. Let's go back up with the leaders here. Take a look at Rick Mast. He is just scooting away at the present time. Got them covered by how much of an interval? Well, I'm having to watch right now. All right. How about two seconds? Yeah. He's, he's riding, riding right along right now. That too fast to start? No, no he's, he's running uh, like a little over 32 seconds, so that's a good that's a good pace. If we'll keep that up, he'll be in good shape. Give you a rundown on the complete field as we get to 20 laps. This is how they're running all the way back through. Uh, Napa run down. See Joy back there in 35th, Stanbridge 34th. Join uh, Elliott. And dead last on the field right now is Brad Teague going a lap down. He's been motoring very slowly. He's the only car that seems to be having any problem at all mechanically out here. He is well off the pace but staying out there. Yeah, it looks like everybody else is just sort of keeping up in a the bunch. They got about a half a lap lead on the last place man right now. What we're getting is that uh, they're saying there's a push on that Ernie Urban number 28. Giving him fits right now as he tries to keep Robert Yates car in seventh position. You can see it fade up the track a bit. Dick Bergren may be able to give us more on the story as we get going here. Some of the cars out here competing in the 600. Dick? Well, Ken, if you listen to the crew chiefs, having a push at this point in the show is a very bad idea. Most of the teams seem to have set up for this race with the cars loose at the beginning. As we go tonight, the cars tend to want to push more. As there are more laps on this racetrack, they tend to want to push more. So most teams are starting loose and hoping that the night and the track will come to them. This is not a good time to have a push. The only one that has a good push is Rick Mass. He's pushing the button, and that car is working just flawlessly. Mass first. And there's another car, Ken Squire, that's working fantastically well, too. It's the number two of Rusty Wallace. Wallace started back in 21st spot. He's up to 10th after 20 laps. Now, we've talked about John Andretti and his bid to run in two races today. How'd you like to be Roger Penske, who's jetting his way to Charlotte right now? In fact, may have already landed, too. He's already won the Indy 500 today. And I'll tell you, Rusty Wallace, to me, looks like a driver who may well win the 600 here this afternoon. You surprised about that car? <laughs> here he is starting uh, 21st out here today. Working his way right through the field. Take a look at this. As the front row cars are back at it this time with Nemechek in the 41 on the bottom. Fighting with Jeff Gordon. That's for fourth. Yeah, Nemechek's going to take it for a moment. Yeah, he finally got him. Riding the DuPont car for a moment with Gordon as he tries to close back in on Nemechek. You get a sense that back straightaway isn't quite as smooth as it looks from up no, it's here. It's not smooth at all. Uh, about two thirds of the way down, it really gets rough. But you get the car under control before you get to the corner, so you're okay. Nemechek and Gordon six seconds down. As, uh, we check out that time. And Rick Mass continues to check out on the field. Mass, who started in seventh, leading and drawing away at the present time. Let's take a look a little further back in the pack and see what's going on out here. Well, they have a heck of a race back there. They've been racing from the word go. They're getting outrun a little bit, but they're busy racing. So, uh, you know, again, I figured they would have done 
sort of fell in line and kept going. But the difference here is, like you say, you start the car a little loose and it starts pushing. Then first thing you know, a car you've been out running, uh, you know, it starts out running you. So it will change as it goes over until till it gets dark, and then they'll, they'll pretty well settle down with it. As they ramble in the back straight away through the three and four turn. This has Dick Trickles, number 32, looking pretty stout out there. There you see the 19, Loy Allen Jr., the Hooters car of Raleigh, North Carolina, giving it his best. Meanwhile, Mass stays in front and continues to build on this lead. What are the disadvantages of a race this long, Rick? When I first started Winston Cup, the pitfall was learning how to be able to be aggressive the last 100 miles. You know what I mean? It's so. This is the longest race we run, so you've got to be able to be there the last 100 miles with the car intact and the driver intact. The interval is about three seconds first to second now, because Rick Mass wants to run away and hide, but in 600 miles. Well, you know, it it's, uh, looked like the Indy race. That's the way it was all day long. And, uh, you know, this is still a long, long way to go. And uh, you've got these cars back here that once they make a, a pit stop, and a bunch of these cars that are running you know, not really that good. They make that adjustment. They're going to come up there and they're going to start challenging. So that's what makes it interesting. Again. Average speed staying about 168 miles an hour, 168.7 here in the early going. Yeah, they're running real regular right now. They've done settled. All the cars have settled down, and this is about as good as they can run with what they've got. Let's go to Kenny Wallace. Thank you, Ken. One thing I'd like to add to this, this racetrack was built on a dump, a landfill years ago. What Richard Petty was alluding to earlier, you can see Kyle Petty, Rusty Wallace on the bottom, but that really doesn't mean nothing right now. You see Rick Mass in the middle high, a lot of guys working the high lane, everybody working the low lane. Sometimes there's just not a preferred lane on this racetrack, so this is some really good racing, and the, and the weather really dictates a lot of these lines. Well, I think you'll see some of these cars that are running a little bit higher uh, once they get adjusted and it starts cooling off. They'll, they'll try to come back and start running the bottom of the racetrack because if you can make your car run there, that's the quickest way around here. 31 laps complete. Gee, that means just 369 to go, Richard, before <laughs> okay, Rick. Okay, well, hang well. on. Here's Mark Martin, that pyro camera, giving us a view of what, oh, the man he's trying to chase down, Joe Nemechek, in third spot. And it's Jeff Bodine second. Mass continuing over three seconds by which he leads here in the early going. Further back, look at Schrader going with Bodine. 13th spot. Good war out there at the present time. Derek Cope gets into the middle of it. Randy? Well, we've gone about 31, 32 laps now. That is exactly about halfway for a fuel stop. Uh, we've talked a lot about tires. Who's your Goodyear? How far will they go? How fast will they drop off? They both camps expect to be able to go a full fuel stop. That'll be about 62 to 68 laps. We'll just have to keep the stopwatches on them to see who has the best tire and how will it fall off. Right now, Hoosier is looking pretty good. Indeed, they are as they hold the board for first, second, third, and fifth. Mask, Bodine, Martin in that Goodyear car. He's the one that breaks them up. Well, the problem is that the car is not doing what they wanted it to do. They had anticipated this movement in the direction of push. They set up the car as loose as they thought Earnhardt could hang on to it. That's not what's happened. The car has a push, and Earnhardt is fighting a push. Crew chief car owner Richard Childress says he doesn't know why it's pushing. Well, he's not the only one that's gotten befuddled by what's happening here in Charlotte. The racetrack seems to be behaving a bit differently than everybody anticipated. And one of the teams is also having a problem is at 24, Jeff Gordon. His car is also pushing. He has radioed into the crew saying, what is going on? He has dropped all the way back to 12th from the pole. His crew chief has said, you just hang on. We'll fix it for you. Well, Earnhardt is 17 seconds back now in 16th position from the leader, Rick Mast. You're on board with uh, Jeff Gordon for the moment as he continues to have his problems. He is now backed up from the pole to 12th position. You're watching. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. You, you do all the practice and all the testing and all this kind of stuff, and when you turn them all loose, you get a different animal. So uh, that's what they're having to settle down with now. But if they can all have a quick pit stop here before long and get their cars adjusted, then, like I say, we're going to see a different race than what we're seeing right now. Well, there you see the Gordon car as it tries to uh, 
do something to get itself back up in here but it's going to take a pit stop and we're at lap 42. When should they be coming in Richard if we stay yeah, green? Somewhere around uh, 60 laps. Uh, I imagine all of them will stop a little early to begin with uh, sort of see what's going on and uh, you know make their adjustments as early as they can. Take a look here John Andretti about to get lapped by Bodine but Andretti on his own has been trying to uh, get himself some distance out here get up through the field he's been fighting for some time with car number 32 Dick Trickle and now that one has broken up you see Randy LaJoy just in front of him he moved up about six positions then he's fallen back again great run for Grissom he's come from 28 to 6 we'll tell you more about that John Andretti you drove Winston Cup you drove Indy cars what's next I still like to drive a Formula One car sometime and you know, and who knows? There's there's always something out there that, that really interests me. That, but um, they gotta have four wheels. So I'm not gonna drive any motorcycles. Although I wouldn't wouldn't mind driving a hydroplane boat. Yeah, I'd give up on that hydroplane boat idea real fast. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I want none of that either. <laughs> Nast has lapped Bill Elliott now. He continues to ramble out here, looking further back in the field. You see Nima check also put in the lap. Here's Trickle in the 32 and finally getting around him is Andretti. That 32 14 scramble has been going on for about 10 laps. Getting some help from Nemechek for the moment. Dodged out there in front. Got a little jet action from the backside. But those leaders. And here comes Randy LaJoy in the 20 back into this yeah, thing. They're uh, they're getting on up in there now, starting to lap some of these good, pretty good running cars. That and when they get to Justin, they'll will run better than what they're doing. They've really got them scattered out all over the racetrack right now. Had a tremendous race here yesterday that Phil Parsons was able to get. Ooh, those great sacks <laughs> up through the eye of the needle in car number 77, that U.S. Air car. Gave He's that thing. You've got her on the ground, though, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't want to file a flight plan here at Charlotte. You got walls come up quick. Right. Take a look at this. That's number 29. He has come a long way in a very short distance. Grissom from 28. Now fifth car number 29 on Hoosiers. He's, Big jump to the sky. He's been really, really steady. He's not raced with anybody. He's got him a good, a good steady pace right now. And uh, he has been coming on, just really picking him up and putting, putting him down. A, putting a lap on Strickland right now, coming after Trickle. Keep your eye on Grissom today. The Alabama driver looks strong. Back to the Coca Cola 600 in a moment. Rusty Wallace making an early pit stop. We're at lap 52. We just saw Sterling Marlin come in, and when he did, he overshot his pit. There's the action taking place on car number two. Here's Dick Bergren. And one of the few cars out here, Ken, that's not experiencing a push. Rusty Wallace, they just took a couple of rounds out of the right rear and puts more weight in the left rear. They were a little bit loose. This is Midnight, by the way, the car that won 10 races. This is the best car in their stable. 18.5 seconds. On car number two, Wallace away, making this early pit stop to make some adjustments. Yeah, here comes the 43, and I, I don't know. I think he's lost his pit. I don't know what is going on here. I think so, he lost the pit. Well, no, what happens? See, you run 35 mile hour, or 55 mile hour down pit road. It looks like you're just lost. You know, <laughs> we're pitting all the way down at the end. So I think what they did, they uh, called for early pit stop because the car wasn't working real good. And so they they say, okay, we'll get in as quick as we can, make this adjustment, and try to get back there and make that time back up. Easy to get lost out here. Well, it's easy to get lost on that that situation. Uh, but if you're not careful when you're running slow at the end of a pit stop, uh, you know if you run stay out there too many laps and try to stretch it, you're better off to stop early, get your get your step together, and then go back out and run quick, and you make up time better that way. But I say a lot of a lot of people are starting to stop now because they're getting into it. I guess they got some kind of trouble there. Ain't they? Boy, up to 30 they've got some problems. Yeah. He was running 30 seconds and brought it in. 
He had that great run out of Sears Point for him. Yeah, well, we've been running good here all week, you know, I mean, it felt real good, but uh, I noticed he wasn't really running that good today, but, uh, you know, this year just sets you back that much further. When you're not running good, you got to make a pit stop and make the adjustment. If you don't make that quick adjustment to pits, you just get that much further down. Working lap 55, if you're just joining us, all laps have been under green so far. Ernie Urban coming in at this point. Yeah, see, Ernie's car has been pushing real bad, so they'll probably make some major adjustments on this car. Four second interval between first and second as Mass leads Bodine. We'll keep a clock on number 28. Larry McReynolds and company, Robert Yates, ready to do some work on Ernie Urban. Let's go trackside. Well, Ernie Urban's car came in and smoked the tires as he stopped here. This is a brand new race car to replace the car that they lost in the Winston last week. They say it's almost identical, but maybe better. This pit stop so far, a good pit stop. They're going to change four tires, try to loosen the car up in the process. Good stop, 17.9, real good stop. The big story right now, though, is Schrader. He came in, and there's no brakes in the 25 as he comes out pit road. And then the 26 come in, they like to hit him, so they had a heck of a deal that they got lucky and missed all that. Mark Martin coming in. Schrader went right by his pit. He's circulating around to come in another time. Meanwhile, Mark Martin on pit road. This at lap 57. Car number six running in seventh position as it left the track. There he goes again. He's out in 19. 19-3. Kenny Wallace uh, down on pit road. How do you view these pit stops? I think this is a very critical point of the race. This is the very first pit stops of the night. It's a long, long race. People like Rusty Wallace and a lot of the guys up front like Earnhardt. I think Richard will agree with me. When they make these pit stops, the quicker pit stops are really close up track position. I think you'll see somebody leading the race after a round of these pit stops other than Rick Mass. Coming in very slowly as we watch Jeff Gordon making his pit stop as Schrader trying to get this car rolled. Whole crew is out of pit road trying to bring him down. There it is, and there's the problem. They just fairly nudge it in. That crew trailed along with it for a couple of laps, and Randy Pemberton is there. Well, you're right. They are having a brake problem. Kenny Schrader came in, missed his pit the first time, came back in. They decided to leave the car in gear. The problem was they were sliding and went through Rick Mass pit. The leader of the race is now in Rick Mass. His best finish ever in this race has been 11th. The Hoosier tires running absolutely beautifully so far. Rick Mass was killing them. Four tires stopped. They want to make sure they get all the gas in on this gold car. So far, second can of gas back in. Absolutely a beautiful pit stop by this team. Left side tires on, 22.1 for Rick Mass. The hood goes up on Katie Schrader's car. We're still waiting for Greg Sachs up pit road. Unfortunate time for Schrader. 43 and then some. It's, the clock continues to run as they try to get some binders back on Schrader's car. Joe Nemechek is in. Watch this stop. Lap 60. <laughs> hey, good job out there. All the way around. Yeah, then has been running a good, a good steady pace also. And right. it, now's the time to run a steady pace. You don't need to really race with anybody this early in this race. And, uh, you know, if they can just set a pace and stay with it, then they're going to be in good shape. Here's Darrell Waltrip bringing the 17 on. He worked himself up to six spot, lap 61, as he pits. Waltrip would come from 17th position, and here is Jeff Bodine making his entry to pit road. Remember that speed limit on pit road. How do you feel about that speed limit? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's really okay under caution flags and stuff like that because you got everybody on there. But under race conditions, I still think they ought to run wide open to anyhow run where they got control of the car. I think it's that should be part of the racing course. That you that you use that time yeah, under green to get time yourself under green. in and out. Because if you happen to have to stop under green, everybody gets a caution deal. You're really, really messed up completely. So uh, first, I think that's a bad deal. First and second of the racetrack as they came in with all these pit stops. Bodine is out in 19-1. There you see Greg Sachs in the 77, the Musgrave ride a year ago. Sachs pulling back onto the speedway. So wholesale change of positions will bring you all up to date on how they're riding. But still, all green flag laps in the Coca-Cola 600. 
66 laps complete. Bill Elliott uh, about the last of the field to make his pit stop. Bodine is now back in command by four and eight ten seconds over Rick Nast in second place. That is as they work lap 67. These have all been green flag stops and that will sort out the field considerably here in the early going. The uh, third position is Joe Nemechek. By the way coming up shortly we'll have an auto week racing update. We'll give you the story on the race here yesterday. Got some material for you on IMSA up at uh, Lime Rock Park this weekend. So stay with us for that. Of course, a little later we'll be updating the big story of the day at Indianapolis. Al Unser Jr. giving his dad some kind of birthday present. Here you are in the Heilig Myers car. This is number 90, Mike Wallace. That Wallace drive, they're all over. We've got one here working <laughs> on pit road. We've got one contending for the lead. And for the moment, uh, car number 90, which is the Junie Donlevy car, is back in 39th position. In fact, it's brother against brother as they go down in there. Right behind this car number 90 is number two trying to slice his way through. Put his brother a lap down. Wonder if we can find Kenny Wallace and see how it is when those brothers get out there. I bet they do a lot of this. Thanksgiving at the dinner table. I imagine they uh, say, "Do you remember what you done to me <laughs> then, there, or up there?" Or Did that happen with the petties? You know, when you get together? Not really. Uh, we run into each other once in a while, but we, I you, think you, we <laughs> give each other a little bit broader area than we uh, would anybody else. Well, there's Kyle making his move in car number 42. He tries to keep the Felix Savetta's car sointed out and get these Pontiacs rolling again. Back in 27th position on the latest rundown. Meanwhile, it's car number seven, Bodine for the lead. Mast in second, Nima check in third. The Bodine's been running that little group for a pretty good while. It looks like he's going to try to get away from him or get away from him, but uh, there's just a five of them are just running in a little bunch. Napa rundown on the entire field. That says 67 laps on the track. I want to give a lot of credit to uh, Michael Walter for that broken shoulder blade. Staying right out there and sticking with it this afternoon. Did a great job yesterday. Backed up into third spot just at the end, and I knew that he was in pain. He was fighting that car at the end. Yeah, he's right back out here going. Yeah, down. he had to be hurt. I imagine he been spent a, a pretty restless night, but uh, no one has got to do this again today. Yep. But uh, he, he's pretty hard hit, so he'll be all right. <laughs> Is that what it takes? Yeah, that's headed? what it takes. You just have to say, hey, man, you know. Somebody else can do it, or I can do it if they can't do it, and uh, that's the way they have to approach it. And the good, one, good ones, that's the way they do it. 17 cars on the lead lap right now. Repairs on Schrader's car to get those brakes fixed were five minutes, 24 seconds in length. So he lost what, 11 laps? Let's go to Randy Pember. Ken Howes uh, obviously frustrated. Ken, uh, you were one of the pre race favorites to take this 600. What the heck happened? Well, Brake pedal went to the floor just uh, four or five laps before. And we're still trying to figure out what went wrong. There's no leaks, no real sign of a problem, but there's a lot of air in the system. He's got some brakes now, but I guess that's it for today. Okay, tough break. That's got to be frustrating, guys. Uh, they certainly had a good car in practice. He was one of the top five that I had on the watch in practice yesterday. 43rd position, and all 43 cars are still on the track as we've completed 73 laps on the mile and a half. 109 miles are down. They're still averaging 163 miles an hour. The record for the fastest 600 goes back to last year when Earnhardt won it for the second straight year. He wanted an average speed of 145.5. There were seven cautions in that race last year. Thus far, we're caution free with the six of the race off the yeah, board. With the, with the way we've been running and the cautions and stuff, they, uh, I think the first 17 cars are in the same lap. Uh, it really separated because of the bad pit stop or something like that. First thing you know, you lose a half a car length or, or half a straightaway, then uh, the people get ahead of you. So now they're all settled down now to try to run it again. Richard, we have Hoosiers on the cars that are running one, two, and three. Hoosier tires on Jeff Bodine, Rick Mass, Joe Nemechek. I've always been a little skittish when you get into a tire war. I always thought that the only ones that ever got hurt in a war of that nature, a tire war, were the drivers. It's always the drivers and the car owners, yeah. that's for sure. Well, I didn't think about the car well, owners, but I sure <laughs> the drivers. Well, they get, they get hurt financially. The drivers get hurt uh, physically, so uh, I guess about one is about as bad as the other. But on the other hand, these uh, these Hoosier folks have come in here, and, and they, they have added a little excitement to it for a lot of race fans. Yeah, so far this year, uh, we've been real lucky. Uh, 
I think maybe one set of tires were at one race wasn't good, but they withdrew the tires. So, you know, from that standpoint, they, they've done a lot better this time than they did the first time they came in back in the, the late 80s. Well, there's John Andretti, who's now completed 600 miles of racing today with 500 still to go. And uh, one of the people that has been responsible to put together the program to uh, get John to both racetracks and so forth is one of the most respected promoters in America today. His dad, of course, had great Indianapolis cars. Troy Rutman won in an Agaginian car. And Kerry Agaginian standing by in the STP Pit Center right now with Rick Benjamin. Well, Ken, it's a, pl a privilege, certainly, to welcome Kerry Agaginian to the broadcast. But I want to show you something. You think uh, you've got a lot of frequent flyer miles, maybe a lot of credit cards in your wallet. I'd like to have a pair of these, a 94 NASCAR Winston Cup credential and a USAC annual credential with a Speedway credential attached to it. And the guy who owns both of these, you're probably the only one in the garage area who's got that combination, maybe besides Roger Penske. Well, uh, that's true. Uh, actually, John Andretti didn't need it because he had a driver's uniform on today. <laughs> no one questioned his credentials. How was he feeling on the ride down here? Uh, very well. He did quite well on the way down. He was relaxed. Uh, he got out of the car. He wasn't really tired at all. Uh, we had a nurse there to, to check all his vital signs. They gave him actually two liters of fluid just to make sure that he could he could go ahead here. He had a good run at Indy. Top 10 finish. Yeah, terrific. He was doing so well. I thought this was going to be the year he was going to win it. He ran in the top three most of the first half of the race, and then something happened in the handling of the car. He the car got very loose. He said, and he fought it the last half of the race and fought to keep in the top 10. But we were proud of him to get in the top 10. Well, we're proud that you're here and that he made it. This guy drove four big league race cars last year: Indy cars, Winston Cup. IMSA GTP and a top fuel dragster the impossible double today being performed by John Andretti. Thanks yeah. Gary. Yeah thanks. He, he just did a terrific job. We flew down on a Canada Air a flight and they, everything went perfectly. Good to have you with us. Agaginian you know how you test out here in the race tack. He was test testing all the choppers and the air find out who was 53 best, huh? minutes exactly yeah. 1100 miles to get that rig down. They had uh, golf carts arranged and vans. <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you what they've done a heck, of, heck of a job just to get him here. I think he, he was probably more anxious getting here than he was running either one of the races. You're watching Jeff Bodine continuing to lead here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in the 35th annual Coca-Cola 600. He has Joe Nemechek in second Ernie Urban in third Rick Mast in fourth. Stay with us. <laughs> At Charlotte Motor Speedway, as the sun goes down and the moon gets ready to come out, we'll show you what Winston Cup Racing is all about here in the 35th annual Coca Cola 600. For the moment, Jeff Bodine has the advantage, averaging 163 miles an hour. In the finger hut car. This is Derek Cope, and he is slowing down. I think he's going to come in right yeah, here, yeah, unscheduled. Yeah, he's uh, he slowed down a little back in the back stretch before he's supposed to slow down. But they usually run around pretty pretty hard till they get to the fourth turn before they make a slow down for the pit stop. But uh, he's got some kind of problem. Finger hut gave uh, some race fan today five million dollars out here on the on the start finish line, Richard, before the race. I think Derek wishes he had a piece of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably broke a two dollar and a half piece here on the car, you know. I think the guy's name was Carl. <laughs> but anyway, there, there you see the situation with the Kelly Yarborough team. It looked like they're just changing tires. Might have had a flat tire. Derek Cope ready to go back to war here. Undoubtedly, that's what happened. They must just have had a flat tire, so uh, he's back out there again. In 22 seconds, 22 second pit stop. Back with the leader, Jeff Bodine at 163.4. That's faster than Harry Gant's pole speed for this racetrack back in 1984. Let's take a look back to second place. That interval's about three seconds to the second place car, Joe Nemechek, number 41. And there's your third place car, Ernie Urban, closing up on Nemechek at this time. There Ernie's just running a steady race and He's just digging away a little at a time, but uh, his car wasn't working real good to begin with. His car was pushing really bad, but looks like uh, after they made that pit stop, they made some adjustments to it, and uh, he's getting through the corner pretty good now, too. Surprise there as he puts a lap on Terry Labonte. Ernie yeah. Irvin. See how low he can hold the car down now? A while ago, he was watching. He was going from there all the way to the wall and then getting a running start, but uh, they got it dialed in right now. Well, we have four teams that are the dominating teams this year. That is for sure. And Ernie Irvin is one quarter of that group. Uh, 
Ernie, explain why the same four teams have been dominating the series lately. I would say it's kind of like having a baseball team with nine players and and five of them are all stars and and the rest are good but they're just not all star players and that's where the big four teams I think have the big players they have all the positions filled with top key people and uh, the other teams are working towards that and and when they get that they're going to start producing better and better so we're just all fortunate right now to really have key people in all the positions. Come down Wallet. Got a. <laughs> Got a spin and a crash up in turn number four, and it's John Andretti in the 14 as he wheeled it around. Yeah, I missed that. I don't know what happened. When I looked up, he was in the ball. Following the leaders that were down here in turn two and up in turn four, John Andretti had a skirmish with the concrete that's beaten in the front end, and he's bent the uh, right front. That looks serious. Yeah, he's, he's kind of used up right now, even though they'll probably beat it out and get it going again. He's not, he's through racing. He, he might run a few laps. John Andretti has given it a real try here in Winston Cup racing this year. Tenth at Indy today. It's going to be far further back in this event. He was running in 39th when he got in trouble up here in the fourth turn. He was uh, saying before the race that uh, his dad, Aldo Andretti, a pretty good sprint car driver in his day, and Mario's twin brother. John says my dad is uh, still warming up to the idea of me racing anything with fenders on. <laughs> he told Tom Sorensen well, that. So he don't, his dad didn't know nothing yeah. but open wheel cars. Right. And, you know, I guess I can say, hey man, but uh, you know he needed some fenders the way he hit that wall though. <laughs> Need a little bit of cushion. Wow, that wall comes up so quick and forward, doesn't it? You well, you had a couple of yeah, bathrooms up here. Let's take a look really at what do. happened to John. All Richard. right, let's see. Oh, he just. Yeah, he just lost the back end of the thing. We took the air off of the back, uh, off the spoiler right there, and he's probably pretty loose anyway. But the two car didn't, didn't look like it uh, caused, caused nothing except taking the air off the car. Leaders are on pit road. There are all three of them. Bodine, the 41 of Nemechek, and the 28 of Ernie Irvin, all in in the first caution period of the race. It comes at lap 90. Here's Dick Berger. Well, Jeff Bodine is in. He's going to take on four tires, as is everybody else. This is a very experienced crew. All of these people, except the gas man, who is now Peter Jellin, were with Alan Kowicki back last year when Jeff Bodine bought the team. Good pit stop for, for uh, Jeff Bodine. Right behind him is uh, the 41 of Nimichek. Also a good pit stop. 19-2 was that uh, first pit stop on Bodine. Continue to do work on the 14 car of John Andretti. Get him back out. This is under caution. Not quite the pressure there's been. A little bit of a breather out here. Do you treat this as a breather, Richard? Well, I, I think he's a, a deal to settle down. Okay, they've not had a chance to settle down in the race. Uh, they run a full pit stop under green. Uh, made a pit stop under green, and, and then run about another half another pit stop. And uh, they they need to settle down, and this will get everybody settled down. So John Andretti is going to get back on the track, but the car certainly isn't the same as it was before it tagged the fourth turn wall in the Coca-Cola 600. Well, they're waiting for John Reddy, uh, John Andretti to come back in the pits. Uh, I talked to the guys on the crew, Doug Williams, the crew chief. I asked uh, if John had said anything. Well, prior to the first pit stop he made, he said absolutely nothing. Now uh, he did have a little right side damage as well as left front damage. Uh, they're going to put a string on both uh, tires, running it from the left front to the left rear, right front to the right rear, trying to match the toe out. He did come over the radio just recently and said the car is now wandering. So uh, as far as the cause of the crash, we do not have that at this particular time. But, uh, of course, he has gone 1,100 miles. Kenny Wallace, could fatigue be uh, playing a problem here? Kenny? Kenny? Randy, I really don't think so. I wanted to make a comment. I read an article where John said if he would happen to get in trouble in the 600, it would probably be blamed on his, you know, possible fatigue. This is a great race car driver. He had everything in place, all the transportation. I think, you know, I watched turn three and four all day long. It's got really slippery. There's a lot of bumps over there. It just came up from out, out from underneath him. But I think we need to remember that he's a good race car driver, and I don't think this can be blamed on all the traveling at, from Indian, Indy to here. Uh, Kenny, I know you're there with a monitor as well. Let's take a look at this replay. Kenny's been running up and down uh, pit road there, getting some reports for us, passing along. Richard's feeling, Kenny, was that uh, the two car just took the air off the back of that thing. What do you think? I think you're exactly right. You know, what has happened, we watched the Indy 500 earlier today, and you've seen what happened to Emerson Fittipaldi. 
any more days, you know, th this time and day we're going so fast. Aerodynamics means so much. Rusty just got up from underneath him, took the air off of his spoiler. And what do we mean by that? Is that, you know, usually there's no car behind you. The air comes around the rear of the car, around what we call the C pillars, puts down force on the rear. Rusty come up behind him and, and you know, got him a little bit loose. But uh, it's just a racing accident. It's unfortunate it had to be John Andretti the first one. Indeed. Was that for nine, two, You're riding with the Derek Cope finger hut car. They haven't had much fun today. They were hoping to get out here and get with it. Uh, uh, he had they, a pretty good run. They made an uh, early pit stop. He and Mustang Dow had a tire going down and uh, because he got right back out there and got right back up to speed. So uh, Dally, that's what happened. Here is a uh, uh, look at Jeff Bodine and here's Andretti back on pit road another time as they administer to the right side of the car. That looks to be more than cosmetic. You saw when it came in the right tire was kinked and now they got the spring out and they're trying to get some kind of a geometry in there that makes it a little stronger for him and not make it quite so loose. Well Richard you were talking about that early stop for Derek Cope that was for a tire that believe it or not blistered it's the first blistered tire we've seen here on pit road I don't think we've got a tire problem because that's the only one we've seen so far. Was it a front one or a rear one? Right rear Richard. Okay. Getting set on a restart. It'll have Bodine first, Nemechek second, Irvin third, Wallace fourth, Mast fifth, Mark Martin sixth, followed by Steve Grissom, Jeff Gordon. Back in ninth is Earnhardt, Greg Sachs tenth, Dale Jarrett in eleventh, Harry Gant to twelfth, Morgan Shepard thirteenth, Sterling, and then Ricky Rudd in fifteenth, Darrell Waltrip a lap down in sixteenth position. Fifteen cars in the lead lap as they take green on lap number 96, 144 miles complete. Speed comes down to 150 average after this lengthy stop under caution, six laps in that caution period. They got all this to do again. Everybody's in running double breast and all that kind of stuff, and they'll have to get back in line again. On board with Mark Martin running sixth position, closing on Rick Mast. They talk about resurfacing this track as early as this <laughs> summer. How it's much do you think it's going to knock oh, the speed up? Golly. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be fantastic the speeds they've been able to run with the, with the new surface because they're almost running this thing wide open, uh, qualifying, and uh, with a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, Grid in the racetrack, you'll probably be able to run wide open when they smooth it up. Lap leaders thus far in the event there in the upper left hand. On board with Bodine looking back at Nemechek. Hasn't Nemechek done well, Richard? Here he is in second spot, comes right back yeah, up. He, again, he's just been regular. Uh, you know, he, the other night he was regular in the Winston race, and uh, they got him a little messed up in one of the, after one of the restarts and got him behind. But up to that time he was, and then all of his practice and all his qualifying and everything, he's just been just a real regular run, and that's what he's doing today. I really thought Darrell was going to have a good run today. He looked pretty good out here the other night in the Winston Select on Saturday night. Seemed pretty confident, but the car's now a lap down, trying to find a way to sort itself out and get it back. Well, if got if you'll tough. notice some of this kind of stuff here, there's a bunch of good cars that are a lap down. But that was a lot of responsibility because they wasn't handling really good right to begin with, or the way they made their pit stops. Maybe their pit stop wasn't quite as good as somebody else's, so they wound up getting a lot of cars down. So I guess there's what 15 or 16 laps still on, or 15 or 16 cars still on the same lane. Yep, up on that lead lap. Jeff Gordon seems to have found the remedy to whatever was ailing 24 in the early going. He's trying to sort him out from some lap cars. Take a look at. Uh, I was watching that that uh, Mayfield car, Jeremy Mayfield. What a story he is. Jeremy Mayfield, the 02 car. Jeremy Mayfield out of Nashville, Tennessee, getting up in the top 10. And with the intensity with which everyone approaches the Charlotte race to have Jeremy Mayfield kind of comes in gives it a good shot put it together and I'll qualify so many others hats off to that number 02 Jeremy Mayfield Ooh, take a look at this and there is Waltrip a lap down Gordon scoots to the inside in the 24 brings Terry Labonte and Earnhardt with him that Earnhardt is in eighth the car in between is a lap down
You think Gordon is really a natural? Yeah, he's a natural. He, to be able to do what he's done and run all the different kind of cars, he's just a natural, natural race car guy. All he needs here is experience. A body lap down, and here comes Bernhardt trying to work his way back up. Let's go back to the front of the field for a moment. Yep. The, the 28 car just passed the lap before, just just passed the 41 car. So uh, he's coming along right now. He, you can bet that uh, he sees him in the mirror. <laughs> Earnhardt, Wallace, Martin, and Ernie. They call them the big four. And Ernie Irvin, number 28, is moving in on Jeff Bodine for the lead. This at lap 104. I'll tell you, Bodine with those Hoosier tires, he seems to fade up the track, gets about another eight feet up. The hole is there, but with the sunlight out there, I don't think you can really muscle a car down on the inside, can well, you, Richard? I don't know. The, the 28 car is thin down there real good. You know, to begin with, he was he was going up and losing all the time in the corner. But uh, Right now he's trying to catch up and the seven cars got the groove so he can go where he wants to go. First and second at war. Andretti is back on pit row. John Andretti brings number 14 back in another time. Meanwhile, Nemechek in third, Rusty Wallace now in fourth. From right down there in the low seats. <laughs> you got it. If you're a real fan, that's where you go, low seats. You want to see it all, you got to be up on top. If you really want to hear it. You want to be part of the show, yeah. you get down there. You want to get, you down get down all there. the dirt in your face yeah. and the whole Rolling deal. Thunder. Like those old dirt tracks, you know, you come out with you had your glasses on. That's about <laughs> all they could see of you. <laughs> now he's running at him. There he goes. Gave it a shot on the inside. Bodine gives him room, stays up that length. He usually stays down till about there and then fades. Not this time. Ernie Urban slices through for the inside, looking for his fourth win of the season. Ernie Urban right back on it. Riding with Jeff Bodine, the X-Side Batteries car, and he's coming right back after it on the inside. It'll be Ernie Urban leading that lap by about six inches. Urban has led nine of 11 races this year. But Bodine isn't ready to give it up. He's down on the bottom and he wants it back. And as those two run side by side, Nemechek in the Meineke car comes back into it. Wallace closes up in fourth and number two. Martin's right there. And they, they're all moving up right now. You got about a six car race right now just because they've been side by side for a lap or two. See John Andretti back on the track running in 40th position. Every seat sold here today. This million dollar shootout at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. For the moment, Ernie Urban in first, Bodine in second, Nemechek in third, Rusty Wallace in fourth. A lot of new names and a lot of good names out here, Richard. Like Nemechek getting into this thing and seeing Gordon come out here. Those yeah. Burton kids from South Boston, some different than what we've yeah, seen. Yeah, we, we've, we've got a lot of new rookies coming along right now. We really have. So we've completed 109 laps. Only one caution so far when John Andretti skinned into the wall. Ernie Irvin leading at the moment. Stay with us. We're back at lap 113. You're watching the battle for 13th position. It's Harry Gant in the 33 and the Daytona 500 winner Sterling Marlin and a lot of smoke has been coming out of 33. Even so he passed the number four. Let's see if we can go to the pits and get more on this story. Ken Squire I'm working my way down to the Harry Gant pits but just before that last caution I did get some information that Harry Gant said he did not think there was a problem with an oil leak but he did know that he was his car was smoking coming off of turn four. We might have to ask Richard Petty whether he thinks that it's a uh, tire smoke or oil smoke and I'll go down and, and confirm it with the pits. Well, I'm going to check it out here and see. I hadn't even really paid any attention to that deal. But Take a look. See right no, that's, there. That's not tire smoke, buddy. That's oil smoke. So he yeah, maybe burned up the rear end yeah, of car 33. He's got, he's got some kind of uh, some, some kind of uh, oil leak is getting on the exhaust or something like that making, that, making the smoke that bad. Number 82 and he won the 500 here. What a run that was. Taylorsville, North Carolina. And the bandit 
in his last performance for Leo Jackson the 600 last race at Charlotte will be in October back up front. Here's Urban in first Jeff Bodine in second Jeff Gordon in third Nima check there in fourth just coming into the picture. Jeff Bodine doesn't want to let go any more than he did the other night. I thought that was interesting that he spun that car out uh, in the Winston and was able to bring it back. Yeah, he, he just got really really lucky when they hit him from behind and spun him. And there he goes around the man. Boy. Those flaps do work <laughs> don't they. <laughs> but uh, anyhow in the uh, in the deal huh. the, the flaps got up kept the car down and he got lucky nobody hit him or he didn't hit him. Stand up and cheer. And once again Jeff Bodine rules. I don't know where he's done uh, 28 done used his tires up or what happened. Uh, Bodine on Hoosier. Ernie Irvin on Goodyear. Bumper cam looking back at Ernie Irvin. He holds it down on the inside there. They work their way out of four. That fourth turn beat up the small of your back pretty good. 600 miles. Feel it when you get home after. Uh, it's not that bad. You sort of allow for all that stuff. I've been I've been watching Earnhardt here. He's just sort of chipping away. They've been up there racing running side to side. And Earnhardt's just sitting there chipping away at them. Five or ten one hundreds a lap. So uh, it ain't been long. He's going to be right up there with them. There you see the top two. Then you see Gordon in third. Nima check. Behind them comes Mark Martin. And Rusty Wallace and back in seventh is the car number three of Earnhardt. This battle for the lead. <laughs> That's not over. We better stay right here for just a moment. The more, the more they battle, the easier it is for the boys behind to catch up because they're busy watching each other, paying no attention to anybody else. So they really slow each other down when they get to the race with each other. Look inside at Jeff Bodine working. We saw the interval there, and here comes Nemechek in this battle for third on the inside of Jeff Gordon. Remember that Gordon is Goodyear shot. Nemechek on Hoosiers in this struggle. And right behind them, Mark Martin in fifth. Well, if you listen to Jeff Gordon talking to his crew, you'd wonder if it's the same car he started the race with. He has periodically radioed in and said the car is pushing. It's pushing terribly. A couple of laps later, he'll radio in and say, now it's loose. I don't understand this. Then he'll radio in and say, it started pushing again. Well, let me tell you what, after that fantastic qualifying run, he just got passed after that fantastic qualifying run here on Wednesday. They changed just about everything in that car, including the rear end, the engine, the aerodynamic balance, the front suspension geometry, the shocks, and Rusty Wallace has just packed him again. He has just lost two spots, but we were talking about all the changes they've made in that car just since Wednesday. And I'm sure they're going to make a lot more before this 600-mile event is over. Rusty Wallace has just made another change. He has pulled himself up into fifth Jeff Gordon deployed back in six and Joe Nemechek has moved around Mark Martin. So Nemechek goes to third Mark Martin falls to fourth. We're at one hundred twenty two laps one hundred and eighty three miles into this. I'll tell you another thing that hasn't changed. Forty three cars started Richard and at one hundred and eighty four miles this time by all forty three are still running. That's something. That's <laughs> unbelievable. It really is. It really is. Rusty Wallace and his Penske team have a never say die attitude. You know, you were talking about Daryl a while ago. Competition is getting so much tougher now. Just about the time you think you got some, a handle on something, somebody's always there. A lot of new names, a lot of new teams. But I told the guys, I said, they keep telling me, what never gets any easier? I said, it's never going to get easier. It's going to get harder, and it's going to get so hard that you're just going to have to make a decision whether you want to be involved in the sport or not. It's going to get that tough. And it's certainly showing itself tough out here today. 43 runners still on the field as we get up toward 200 miles complete. Most cars we ever had running at the finish, uh, 34 in that rain shortened race in 1968. We had 31 in 86. 43 still going out here today. That could be a new record in the Coca Cola 600 before this one is over. We're back at lap 130. That's 195 miles. Only one caution in the first 200 miles. That's the way it may be before we get this one free at 600. And we have Earnhardt and Mast in the battle for sixth position. 
three car on the outside and the one and yeah, Earnhardt's one, doing one car's been digging there with him. But uh, they've been racing all day. <laughs> you know, they still at it. There's that 29 car right in there with Grissom. Eight. Yeah, Grissom, Grissom ain't let them get nowhere. Darrell's been running good. Darrell passed the three cars a while ago. He's a lap down, but he was running good. Yeah, Wal Waltrip is 16, one lap down on Hoosiers. I was surprised that Waltrip, of all people, switched from Goodyear to Hoosier. Well, I think everybody was. Uh, but Darrell, Darrell's in a situation where he's a car owner and driver, and he knows that he's got to do just as good as he can for his sponsor. So he said, okay, I'll play the middle of the road, whichever one I think's the best. And, uh, you know, a lot of times that's probably better from race to race. But, you uh, know, all year long deal we felt like the good year is going to be the best and uh, that's where we're going to go. Look at Rick Mast work on the outside of the one for six spot take it away from Earnhardt. I got to say those Hoosiers are hanging up on the outside and really working. Well they're working anywhere because uh, you know that make any difference where we've got a man leading the race is running in the middle of the track one running second is running down below him mm -hmm. so they're both of them making the same kind of time. 133 laps now complete in the Coca-Cola 600. Next time by, they'll be at 201 miles. Accident free except for one little skirmish up here when uh, Andretti's car, John Andretti, skittered up into the fourth turn, had the wind, had the air taken off the back of his uh, car by car number two, Rusty Wallace. He brushed the wall. Ended up a little, but he's right back out here racing. 43, still competing through 200 miles. We're about to see one car on pit road. Three car. That's Earnhardt. Eighth place car. He eases down into the pits. This at lap 134. That's a little early, isn't it, Richard? Yeah, that's a little bit earlier than what he wanted to do. They, they uh, run in some kind of trouble there, but you got to see. Remember, there was a couple, three cars started passing him, so. Maybe his car quit working. He decides to go ahead and stop and make that adjustment right now. And that's just what's going on with the Richard Childress team. First time Earnhardt came to this race. He's only uh, run 43 laps since his last pit stop. First time Ern Earnhardt came here. When the race was all over that day, he finished one position in front. He was like 22nd. In front of a guy named uh, Richard Childress, and I've always thought Childress <laughs> figured, you know, <laughs> if you can't beat him, join him. Uh, I guess maybe that's what. It is. What a but great what, joining! What they do, they sit here and you watch these cars and uh, you know, sharp pick crews. They sit there and they say, okay, you know, we can run 32 seconds or whatever you get around the racetrack, and all of a sudden you run 32.10 or 32.20. They say, hey, let's get in here and get them tires so we can get back out there and run 32 second laps. So that might be what they do in right here. So. Earnhardt trying to be the first man to ever win this race three times back to back. There's a little problem here. Let's see how he'll deal with it in the Coca-Cola 600. In the Coca-Cola 600, you're watching Jeff Bodine in first, Joe Nemechek in second. Uh, pit stops have begun. We just saw Wally Dollenbach roll the number 43 down pit road, and Billy Stanbridge was in. Uh, I think we can get a report from Nick Bergman as to uh, that pit stop by Dale Earnhardt. Ken Squire, the problem with the tire problem, the right front blister, that is the second good year blister we have seen. One of the right rear for Cope, now one of the right front for Earnhardt. Uh, Kenny Wallace has an update for us. He's down there on top of the hollow zone. Hi guys, we're down here on top of Ken Musgrave's hollow. You know, what's happening right now is I'm, I'm checking out turns three and four and I can't see one and two. But behind you guys, the sun's starting to go down. I'm concerned about that blister. Because as Richard Petty knows as a race car driver, the sun's starting to go down. They're going to go faster. They're going to enter turn one quicker. So you know, we're just going to have to really keep an eye on that. Another thing I want to say, that this is unbelievable. This race is going absolutely flawless. I've watched these guys going to turn three, two, and three wide. For there not to be an accident this deep into the race, it's pretty unbelievable. Back to you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. All right, from the top of Musgrave's truck where he's getting that observation. Now, what about this? As the sun goes down, I know it's been a while, but you've run 32 races. You've run day and night. What's the circumstance now, going to be here? The deal, the deal is, is right. What happened is if the sun goes down, the track gets quicker, and the cars get tighter, and if they're using up their right now, right now, they're going to get some problems later. Randy DeJoy, I don't know why that is just kidding. It's been so flawless for everybody. I just can't imagine. I can't think that you've gone with the entire field this deep into a race. Well, you know, when they first started, I 
said, man, this is going to be something else. Well, things went side to side, and everybody was racing. And sideways. And the deal is that the tires are working, the cars are working, and they like a little bit of jumping around, and other man is going to be giving room so far. Nobody's really crowded anybody. As long as they don't crowd anybody, then we can do it. Later in the race, when they get to really racing, they might start crowding each other. Well, Dine and Nemechek stay up in front. And right cars. now, Mark Martin is on pit row. That's the seventh place machine. See, some of these cars have stopped early. Like you said, they, they probably started killing. They was having tire problems. And now the new ones are probably not that much further than And you're not careful if they're running a whole race uh, under green, and somebody's going to have to make extra pit stops over some of the other pieces. So that's going to be interesting. Isn't it incredible to think about it? Change those tires faster than they can put that fuel in. Yeah, that, that really gets some. You're trying to put 22 gallon of gas in the car. You're just going to run full tire. You can change the tires back in the gas. 22.5 is the time on that pit stop. And I see a car going back to the garage area. I think our first retiree has just happened. And that is number 47. As you see, Sterling Marlin sliding in. Billy Stanbridge has gone back to the garage. We may have our first retiree from the event. It's idling back six, eight miles an hour. Four tire change taking place here on the Kodak car number four. Yeah. As Steve Carl, Grissom, you know, Steve's been running good all day again. He, he's done got up there and Rick Mass has got fast uh, very early also. Front standings at Bodine first, Nemechek second, and Grissom has just moved up. That's four Hoosier tire cars. Uh, they're all right now starting to dominate that part of it. Bobby Hamilton has just pitted in car number 40. See the 90, Mike Wallace has come in in the Heilig Myers car. Bodine first, Nemechek second. Now look at this, two and 28 are at it. That's for fifth. Walter running a lap down just behind him. Bodine first, Nemechek second, Grissom is third, and Mast is fourth, and here's Wallace. Underneath Dirty Urban to take fifth. That puts Gant to seventh. Roll around out there. They're going to put a black flag on it. Well, while. whatever was smoking a while ago must not have got any worse because he's still out there digging along. And he's taking up chewing. <laughs> Well, guys, there's been a lot in the media about the Big Four, the Big Four in which they come competition this year. Hello. Hello. Oh, we got a caution. Yes, we do. We have two cars in the wall. One is Bodine, and the other is uh, the Bobby Labonte car, the Maxwell House car. Right back behind the wall. Now let's start working on it back there. Maybe try to resurrect something. But that looks savage. Just put Earnhardt behind the lap. Even though he was been running fifth or sixth or seventh, he's a lap now because he stopped and the other five or six people had. We'll have a replay on this incident in turn four. That is the second caution period of the day. Six lead changes among five drivers so far in the 600. Caution is out at lap 152. Gant was on pit road. Earnhardt will have lost the lap here to put him back in 17th position. And let's take a look again at what happened to Brett Bodine. Uh, here they come around here, and the 22 is getting ready to make a pit stop, and the 26 hits him and doesn't see him, knocks him on in, knocks him on in the pit. But uh, that's what happened. The 22 was stopping, and the 26 just ran up on him so quick at uh, running the back of him. Just not paying attention to really what was going on. Now, if you want to see it from trackside, take a look at this. I don't want to see it from trackside, <laughs> but anyhow, that but you showed it better right there. You can see that uh, Bobby had slowed down and uh, they just wind up running right in the back of him. Well, that's the end of the day for the Quaker State Park. 
stops from stuff they had before. So now you got two real good running cars. It's a lap down. It shouldn't be, but circumstances have been caught up with. Kenny Wallace down there has been getting the story on this incident. Kenny, what's up? Okay, I just talked to Bobby Labonte. You know, it's one of these speedway pit stops, like Richard said. You know, you're trying to get around the bottom of the racetrack. That's the groove. That's where you want to run. Bobby holds his hands up, says he's coming down pit road. 26 car doesn't see him. This is what happens right here. It's a bad story. Bobby Labonte had a good run going. Sun have anything to do with that? Uh, it could have. It really could have because the sun is right over the number four corner. And you're coming around, and I, I can't see from here. But yeah, I can remember the sun being real bad here. And, it, and you've got a dirty windshield. Everybody's getting ready to stop. You've got the grease on it. And uh, like you say, all, all you got to do is just take your eyes off of it. Richard, take a look at uh, turn four. There, there's the sun from yeah, the side. I, you can't really see it from here, but what happened? Everything flex off of everything. And, uh, you, you come around, and, and it's light and then when you go into that dark area it's just like somebody puts their hands in front of the eyes so uh, it's really really hard to, to be able to see it that was probably what uh, made made some of it anyway that's for sure you can see the activity here on car number 22 and indeed they are going to try to get him back in and here's harry gant on pit road and they're working on they're still looking for that smoke that's been going all day that sure looked like it was coming out of the tail end. So well, what happens is it leaks, leaks on the headers up front. So like was a header leak? A valve cap, casket or something. Yeah. Leaks on there, and then it goes all out under the car, and by the time it gets back there, it's a lot bigger smoke than it is under the hood. Randy? Well, Joe Nemechek was in. I, I went over and talked to crew chief Doug Richard after the pit stop. I asked him if they changed anything on the car. They said they changed a little bit of air pressure on a pit stop prior to that. This time they changed absolutely nothing but four tires, added the gas. They dropped it and left it out, uh, let it go out. Uh, Dick Bergman has more on Jeff Bodine. Well, they're about as happy with their car as apparently Nemechek is with his. They changed the air pressure in the right side tires one pound. That's kind of like sneezing in them. Other than that, they put fuel and four tires on the car, and they're off and out of here. Brett Bodine. It's a little bit more than sneezing them, okay, guys? <laughs> <laughs> they're not doing it for the exercise. You know, they're looking at changing the spring. When they change a, a, a temperature on the tire, the pressure on the tire there, they can change it 50 pounds or 100 pounds, like putting in a more spring. Like when I say 100 pounds, that's 100 pound spring, not 100 pound on the tire. We're under caution in lap 155 of this crash that's eliminated Brett Bodine in his fifth 600 start, ninth 600 start, the fifth DNF. Magnificent day in Charlotte, North Carolina. Beautiful crowd, every seat taken. And there you see from the Vestas aerial platform, this mile and a half facility where they're running the 35th annual Coca-Cola 600 where we're 156 laps into it and getting set to go racing once again, 234 miles complete. And as they line up, it will be Bodine first, Nemechek second, Irvin third, Wallace fourth, Rick Mass fifth, Dale Jarrett sixth, Gordon next, then Steve Grissom eighth, Ricky Rudd, Greg Sachs tenth, Morgan Shepard eleventh, and Harry Gant in twelfth, all in the lead lap. Martin goes a lap down, thirteenth, Earnhardt fourth. Up coming up down through there. But he gave him a good turn there, got the most of the time, and he gave him a personal 
so fast. But he got the third corner. He didn't make a good one. He's not very often. He's got to reach his head. He's going to come to his eyes. You can see his guys going to a corner. But you did just then. Nemechek in second. Wild man out there for the moment. Rusty Wallace in the two car. Lies for Rob Bodine's bumper cam. Looking back at Joe Nemechek in second place. Underneath, struggle for second as you look back from Bodine and going to the bottom, taking the spot is Ernie Irvin. He brings with him Rusty Wallace. Nemechek falls to fourth. He may fall to. Here comes Mark. Mark Martin. Mark Martin is there. Side by side. Lap 160. Snoozy looking for the team. Nice, not much time for snoozy <laughs> out here. Center, but not this early in the race. We wish you'd been able to come to the checkered flag. You went right to the front early against these drivers, your brother, Ernie Irvin, Rusty Wallace, who's stout out there. Well, I think uh, the 7, the 41, uh, you know, they're awful tough on long runs. The Hoosier cars have an advantage? Well, it looks that way, but, uh, you know, hopefully when it cools off, the good years will come back at them. You're feeling okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, awful dejected. You know, I just, I lost uh, Bonnie Bonnie and the sun over here. And, you know, that sun is brutal right now over there in the fourth turn. Of the cars running up front, who might have something other than this lead group as we watch nine cars take it down. Well, you know, the sense of tires seem to be different. Uh, you know, they seem to be different after they make a pit stop. You know, some guys get a better mix. That, uh, it's just going to play out. See who's got the best stuff to get in the race. It's tough to call right now. Conditions are going to change a lot before the check flag. Once it really cools. Well, Brett Bodine, thanks for coming on with us tonight. Thank you. Up in front, Ernie Urban, Rusty Wallace in a struggle. Ooh. Tight running. <laughs> Poor Rick Mast. Something's happened, I think, on the number one car. It's backing up. He almost got collected. That battle up in front is now a Goodyear battle between Wallace and Urban. The car will try to It really is. Our, our Ford engines have been real, re real reliable, and the cars been handled well. I've got Midnight, my favorite car, in the last year. And uh, I've got other cars that are just as good, but this one's stuck in my head since I've had so much success to keep running. But uh, we're in good shape, and I can very easily win this. The 1990 Coca Cola 600 winner says it's going to be easy to win it again. Does one car, do you kind of favor one? Uh, you look back over all those 200 wins, a couple of cars. I wish you hadn't caught up with that back. Yeah, I think you wind up doing that. Uh, we wound up in 1967 and uh, won all those races. I fell out four races that year and we set up a brand new course. We finally threw that thing away in the back of the And I think it is. Cars are like people. They got personalities. They do? Yes, sir. Believe it or not, they got personalities. And you just you get the liking something, the liking a car, the way it feels, or the way it reacts. I 
time she gets near it, decides not to run. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at uh, Ricky Rudd going under Rick Mast here. And let's go back and replay for a second, Richard, and look at what happened to Mast here. Had us all taking a deep breath. Yeah, he got up a little bit on the outside and walked up away from him. So he just all but touched the wall. And then the car behind him runs into him. And it, all this stuff kind of takes your breath. It takes you a little while then to get it all gathered back up. I mean, he did. I didn't even know he went out in there like him. A little that's, and that's what happened there. The, the Nemechek. That's the reason Nemechek is far back in the woods. Got some parts and pieces out there. We did have some parts and pieces out there. Caution is out. They caught up in that. So Wallace Urban come across the line. Mark Martin, Mark Martin, a little bit to protect the left up. Taking the shot at it. Rick Mast is in quickly. So while they're dusting off the speedway here, Charlotte will pause for a commercial break and be back with more. They're now 170 laps complete in the Coca-Cola 600. Kellogg's presents a NASCAR profile featuring Harry Gantt. As Winston Cup stock car racing fans, we're spending the 1994 season saying goodbye to one of this sport's all-time great drivers. Harry Gant is riding off into the sunset, but the memories of his spectacular career will never fade away. Harry's made quite an impact on the sport since his first start way back in 1973. But every true racer takes a few bumps on his way to victory lane. For Harry, we'll remember those bumps and bangs, but more than anything, we'll remember his victories. And we'll remember that incredible month of September 1991, when Harry Gantt captured the imagination of racing fans everywhere, winning six consecutive NASCAR races, four Winston Cup and two Bush Grand National events at the age of 51. We were just wild about Harry. And as the years go by, Harry Gantt will remember those great moments that made him a legend. Memories that will never grow old. We'll remember those moments, too. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, indeed, Harry Gantt. 258 miles have been completed. 172 laps. Here is car number four coming out right behind the 33. Here he is coming in a moment ago. Rubber, a pliable substance often used in tires. Pliable? Huh. A piece of rubber did that. <laughs> well, yeah, when you run over, applied it, that right. ran over that tire like that, and that just pushed all that stuff back up in there. So they got to get something to hold it That's about half fiberglass and kind of stuff. Don't break as bad as it means. On pit road, the pit stops had Wallace in at 16-6, Urban at 18-3, Bodine at 19-7. On the racetrack, when we get ready to resume, it's Wallace at the uh, point. Man will be Jeff Gordon and running fifth on the field, Dale Jarrett with Morgan Shepard sixth, Ricky Rudd seventh. We're going to have 12 cars back in the lead lap. Randy? Well, Rick Mast is back in the pits. Uh, prior to that caution, Rick almost caused a caution on the front stretch. They came in uh, three different times. Now they pulled the quarter panel out. He does have a little damage where he made contact with another car. He's called for, for some stop leak as well. His water temperature is going up. As far as Joe Nemechek is concerned, they just changed four tires. Jeff Bonine changed four, put in a round of wedge, uh, just trying to tighten the car up just a little bit. Also, Terry Levani and uh, the 31 car, the Hardy's car of Ward Burton, were in just regular pit stops and four tires. Dick Bergeron? Well, Ernie Irvin's car is very close to being right. When he came in, they just loosened it up one round and sent him off. Uh, the 24, Jeff Gordon's car is a little bit tight. They are hoping and praying for an eclipse. They want this sunshine to go away so the car will stabilize. It is not yet stabilized, and they changed the car just a little bit. Rusty, Rusty Wallace car. We've got a crash the main straightaway. Grissom at number 29 on the restart as he came up through the gears into the wall, head on. And the leaders are racing around. He was in 10th spot. Remember, they'll race back to the lead. They work down here on the main straightaway. Car number 29, 
lies right in the center of the track as they come back around. They're telling him on the radio. Earnhardt made his lap. Earnhardt has made his lap up. Earnhardt comes Jack out. Through. Oh, Kyle Petty just there getting is. by. That is it. Seen. I, I, I knew he'd seen the car, so I wasn't worried about that. The deal is, anybody take him close a chance. That, that was pretty much the chance right there. But he was a lap, he was a couple laps down, so that made a lap up for him. But that put Earnhardt back in the back in the go. Into the 13th position. Kyle was three laps yeah, so back. He, that makes him that up just one. makes him two laps. The rest of the field still coming by as car number 29 on the start. Remember, he was having such a great run today. He was intent on that start. He hammers it into the wall. Been running so regular, not taking any chances or anything, you know. Coming down for the start. Here's how it looked. Intent with that. Harry Gant was right behind him. Yeah, but I, don't, I don't know if he didn't run into the door right in front of him. That's what it looks like when it happened. Yeah, well, that both of them seen what was going on. That, they allowed for it. I, I didn't understand the, the two car not racing back to try to beat the three car. That, uh, that kind of surprised me. I think that's somebody on the radio. Well, yeah, but what happened, they knew it was clear. All they had to do was say, run, you know, run high and be okay. But uh, they, they came around side to side and uh, the fourth corner. And the two car went off running through a good. Now you see Earnhardt, who's now back in that lead lap. He's made it up just like he did a year ago. Remember, he was a lap down. He made it up and came back to win. Let's see if he can pull that off again today. Hey, race fans. Budweiser asks, who won? It was May 29th, 1988 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. The 600-mile classic getting underway. The 28 of Davey Allison led from the pole with Jeff Bodine's number five alongside. While those two greats battled it out for the lead, another superstar was working his way to the front. The familiar black number three with Dale Earnhardt on board moved up from the seventh starting spot and into contention for the victory. While these three great racers were duking it out at the front of the pack, Two more of the day's top stars were quietly waiting for the latter stages of the 600 to make their move to the front of the pack. Car 17 with Darrell Waltrip on board. Rusty Wallace in the 27 holding back to see how the battle up front would sort itself out. But whose strategy worked that day? Here's the list of contenders, the answer in a moment. If you thought Daryl Waltrip was the winner, you're right. Here's how DW's strategy played out. The three car of Dale Earnhardt and the five of Jeff Bodine were involved in a very controversial spill near the front of the pack. After the dust settled and the fenders were collected off the racetrack, both Bodine and Earnhardt were out of contention. Bodine because of the damage to his number five and Earnhardt because of a five lap penalty that was imposed for that incident. The surprise of the day was Barto, Florida's Rick Wilson up in car number four. Wilson led 106 laps before trouble struck. He crashed hard. That sent him to the sidelines and opened the door for Darrell Waltrip in the 17 and Rusty Wallace in the 27 to battle it out for the win. But in the end, Rusty couldn't get by. Darrell picked up his fourth victory in the Memorial Day Classic. Who won is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. Back to you with a, just a lap complete under green, 180 laps complete, three wide back here as they sand the 600, 270 miles are complete.
remember that Nast is on the lead lap. He's in the 12th position. They've been making a lot of pit stops. see a little bit different race. You can see some of these cars didn't run too good, change and some of the, you know, as far as who's running and who's not. But you uh, the new tires and how you know how they can fade at night. Hale Jarrett there in fifth position now with Joe Gibbs car number 18. Got a couple of cars pitting. There's uh, Labonte coming in and also Derek Hulk is pitting another time. You see the 18 car with Morgan Shepard right after him in the 21. Well, the 18 car is going to be really good. This is Keith right now. Nobody said anything. Uh oh. There's <laughs> Earnhardt again, right? But, uh, nobody said anything about him, but he's just been steady just now. Right looking at him all the time. Some time out here fighting with Morgan Shepard. 16 months since Dale visited Victory Lane. And he's about forgotten what we got. Like. One in the world. Oh, we got one three. in trouble and three spinning, crashing all the way around. Waltrip just getting by. 44. And that is the uh, Billy, Bobby Hamilton car out of the Sabetta stable. Lost up in turn two. And Waltrip coming for sure. Looked like he was going to collect him. Somehow just barely missed the spinning car number 40 of Nashville, Tennessee's Bobby Hamilton. That winds up saving uh, Rick Nass from getting lapped. Uh, he's he's going to be able to catch back up and stay in the same lap with him. Wallace coming around and he set to pit here, a little flat spot in those tires. He was in 29th position, three laps down when that incident took place. Boy, it looked for all the world like Walter was on his way out of this thing. The five-time winner. Wallace got lucky. The car went back up the track instead of kept coming down. Yeah. Darrell made his move to the inside. Just made the right move, and everything worked out good. So many times that inside move well, here gets you in trouble. He was lucky. That's another one-car wreck. We have yep. one-car wreck here and the one-car wreck there. There was two in one of them up there. Had three one-car wrecks uh, in, in one double for it. So that, that's pretty good. An observation from Kenny Wallace. Steve, you were really running good, man. Uh, started 28th, moved up to 5th. We've been talking about you all day. What happened? Well, it's just kind of one of those deals there on the restart. Uh, everybody's trying to get going. And I don't know if somebody must have missed a shift or something. We just checked up there a little bit. You know, just one of those deals. There wasn't enough room for everybody to be at. Yeah, this is a shame. You know, the new team, you guys will start out first this year trying to get some good points. Gary Beth put a good team on. I think you're running great today. So, uh, you know, I guess you go on a Pokemon. Yeah, that's true. I tell you, Gary, kind of back from Super Speed. Uh, this whole team, my hat's off to him. The car drove super. Uh, it was just having fun, kind of logging laps there and trying to get toward the end. Okay, back to you guys. Take a look at this, Richard. Elmo Langley in a tremendous battle with Rusty <laughs> Wallace out there. Uh, I seen one down here in the first corner. They've got an Elmo Langley fan club. Have they? Yeah, they've got a few people Race out there. Race car driver? Oh, he, yeah, he's got his banners and the whole <laughs> thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Elmo. The other day, uh, Urban and Earnhardt, and I think Wallace, they were all out there when he was on the track. Well, you got to figure they, they used up the paint on two sides the, in the bumper. They get to arguing with him and stuff, and they tell him, said, look, man, I got, I bled more laps than y'all have. That's <laughs> what, you know, it, Let's take a look at the replay. All right. Turn two, Bobby Hamilton, loose. Yeah, he was up there all by six. I don't know what happened up to that time, but really got lucky because he hadn't hit anything. Here he doing all the slide. Oh. There was Daryl when the car stayed up. But he get lucky. Nobody hit him. He's not. He didn't even hit the fence. He just got up in the loose stuff. And uh, was able to just come around with four flat tires. <laughs> four were out ones anyway. Definitely worn out. Probably just wore out. He got these hard to do when he came around the side of that guy. Yeah, he might have four flat ones too, but he walked her down. Need to check in. Nine 
It's a miscommunication, guys. He was on the lead lap. He had the opportunity to come in uh, the lap before and did not. Just kind of missed it. So miscommunication. They're in now for four tires. Originally, Jeff Bodine was going to come in and take out Gas out. He elected to stay out. And now uh, Joe Nemechek goes back out. Absolutely will kill his track position. Track position counts you so much on this mile and a half, Richard. Well, it really does. Space lap can cost you. Okay? Everybody cautions about four new tires, and everybody races for a few laps. So you can get behind high quick uh, if you're not up in line. We're about 13 laps away from the halfway distance of 200 laps, and we're over 300 miles into it. You get worn out in the 600 mile event. This I always did. Down <laughs> more I always than other did. races, more uh, like over Delaware or Pocono. No, or not really. You know what I, mean? I tell you, the, the time of day is a lot better now. When it was really, really a hot day, it really just takes a little bit to out of all the drive. But, uh, you know, Loba does the same thing. This, but this has made it a lot nicer for a 600 mile race. You run four and a half hours now, and it really doesn't bother you that bad. How long would it take you to recuperate after a 600 mile race? The old lady started noon and you raced at uh, five. You know, get ready to go the next day. Just keep going. Well, yeah, they might get, you know, pull you out of the car when the race is over. Let's get a racing update on what else is going on this weekend quickly as we get set to re-go in the 600. Here's Rick Benjamin. Indeed, we are at lap 189. And Mark Martin down there trying to make his lap up. There's the number six car. That's Martin on the bottom. Getting up underneath Ernie Irvin, going for Rusty Wallace. Pontiac stays in first. That's a fool. I beg your pardon. <laughs> you know, I in the bottom, all torn up. Still fires. You saw him put his hand up, he pulled up on the outside, he got collected, driven down the track. Here's Rick Mast that had that great run going, was in 12th position, had made up that lap, found himself back among the leaders. Earnhardt had made up. Here's the viral car coming in now, the Valvoline car of Mark Martin. Trying to make up a lap. He was up among the. Yeah, but then he had some kind of trouble because he had slowed down. Everybody had seen him except for him. Earnhardt just drove right up in the back seat with him. He's still out there and knocked out four or five cars. Six cars. Ward Burton. <laughs> Ward Burton was one of them, Richard. Cal uh, Isle got. Yeah. The, uh, the nine car was in that one. Rich Bickle had no place to go. Mark Martin, as we mentioned. I think there's nothing more you can hear, right? I think it's eight or nine cars before we see the end of this one. Uh, it's kind of messed with the grill and stuff up on the end. They put a little tape on the end, set in the back out. So, lap 192, caution is out. Major incident. At least eight cars in turn four. More on it. Revestus aerial platform. Take a look at what happened here. Caused this major incident. Mark Martin backing up to four or five cars. Earnhardt just ran right in the back, and then that, there wasn't no place for him to go either. Though. And then the 31 and the, you know, against the wall. Dick Trickle <laughs> catching the front of the uh, Mark Martin car. Uh, Kyle got caught up in it there. Just took a little piece out of the side of Greg Sachs. Had, Greg Sachs was the luckiest one out there. Yeah, he had, yeah. Right through the another middle, angle. Right. Take a look at this, and you'll see where Earnhardt had no room at all. <laughs> You're on the brakes in front of him. He pulls up. Now it gets yeah. worse. Yeah, the 30 car slows down, and Earnhardt moves up to hit it, miss him, and then he runs into the 60, which was was running slower. Yeah. 
Look at that they, 77 car. They, they went by him on both sides, yeah, and he's still Lake slowing Steve down. Wait waits for everything, and they hit him on both sides. He just did touch uh, the 31 car. Yeah, Darryl, uh, Kyle's in there on the outside of him. From Mark Martin's in car. This is where it began. Okay. Something happened. He, so he's got his hand up. Right. Yeah, he's trying to tell him what's going on. He's trying to come down. Bang. Wow. Bad day for Mark Martin. Bad day for a bunch of them up there. And a good day that they're all walking away. That, that too. Mark Martin certainly had one of the cars to beat today. Uh, what happened? We cut a left rear tire down right there in the front of the pack and before I could get to the inside, they started passing me on the inside and the outside. I knew I was going to wreck. I, I had a tire down, you know, and, and uh, it just, there wasn't a way to hold it. I just, I don't know. They started running into me in the left front and the wreck was on. But, you know, it's hard to drive that thing with one tire down. It's especially hard to drive it with cars passing on both sides and a tire down. Mark, how frustrating was it out there? The Hoosier car seemed to be so good. They're pretty good. We were we had a great race car, man. We had a car that was going to be a contender tonight, and we, you know, we were messing around, and, and we got had bad, some bad luck. Thought we had a tire going down, and pitted early, and then the caution came out and got us a lap down. But I believe we were going to make it up. I believe we'd have got our lap back before it was all over with. And it was a super car and a super run, and now it's a heap of junk. Let's take a look at it again and listen to the action. Okay, guys, it's complete pandemonium down here. We've never had this big of a crash there. There must be six or seven cars. The one car Rick Mass led early, had a great night going. You can pan out and see all this action. They're trying to get this car back in the race. The radiator's all the way into the fans, so um, it's wild down here right now, guys. Yeah, that certainly bruised that one badly. And that car six, that was the same car that got beaten up at the Winston Select. They rebuilt the whole thing for him and they have it in like this. Michael Walter, open shoulder blade and all down there on the inside, still trucking. Yeah, he, he, I'm glad it, I, I hate anybody again. gets in the wreck, but glad he wasn't in the wreck. He would have just hurt him that much more. had no place to go. The 32 was run into the wall. Great. 41 got through. And even here, here comes the 77 car. Here comes the 9 going. The 15 going. The 77 car still going. <laughs> Dick Bergman. Well, Dale Earnhardt gets the award for working the hardest on his car. I should say his crew is. Recall that early in this race, he was complaining that the car was pushing. It was understeering. Well, they have come in on virtually every caution period, given up track position consistently to adjust this car. He's in the back of the pack, but they are getting
Mr. Michael Waltrip looked like a candidate to win out here yesterday. And faded, and I'm sure the pain was part of what got him faded to the third spot. But yesterday's race was over. Bill Parsons got that first victory. Michael Waltrip was quoted in the uh, paper this morning. He said, I'm real happy that Bill Parsons was proud to kick everybody's butt. up to the outside a little. Ricky Rudd is also there. He's in the lead lap yeah, got with the tide car, number 10. I had her tell, no telling him. He's just been there running the first day to 10 all day long. Now he's going to take advantage of that particular position that they got on the track. That's what we talked about yesterday, the old petty thing, you know. You're just in there, nobody's paying attention to the halfway and halfway you're in the lead lap. <laughs> they start paying from then They started checking into the old 40. Shepard finished second in this race in 87, while behind the wheel of uh, Stacy Clark. Lights are on around this right now. How do you like those lights? They're not caution lights. These are the lights and lights. Okay. The night lights. Yeah, okay. The night lights are on. Okay. Yeah, well, if they're doing turn them on now, uh, as the sun goes down and starts getting darker, you don't really notice it as much. Well. But if they wait until it gets twilight and then turn them on, hey, man, that's a big... Big change all at one time. How do you feel about racing the lights? That's great. I don't know if you're going to put the ever nine under the rate of the lights, but I think it's really good. Bestus aerial platform. Here's how they're running those 24 degree high banks. Big story in Earnhardt's pit. They are preparing a new nose for that car. When he ran into the back end of Mark Barton, he pushed it in. The real problem is not aerodynamics, as you might think. What's happened is the car is beginning to heat up. Just about every crew member, including Andy Petrie and Richard Childress, are gathered around here trying to get this thing ready for Earnhardt. Unscheduled stop for Daryl Waltrip on lap 210. He's in the pits. He's running slowly for a lap. Ready to help him. Well, all of a sudden, Daryl came up with the radio and said, we don't have any fuel pressure. So they either lost a fuel pump or they have a pickup problem in the, uh, in the fuel cell. He also radioed and said, go and run and get a fuel cell from one of the guys that is already out of the race. You see them back under, underneath the uh, rear deck lid of the car. They're checking the fuel system. It's either a pump or a pickup problem. There he goes. He's leaving back on the track. I'll try and get a further up there. Running 14 when he came in. Well, 
Well, gentlemen, there's also a tire story developing here. We've seen a couple of cars completely lose the tread of their racing tires. What I'm holding is the piece of uh, tire that Sterling Marlin ran over 30 or 40 laps ago. This is the same thing that happened to Mark Martin. This is a brand new outside tread of a brand new racing tire. You can still see the bold marks and the depth marks in this tire tread. Marlin ran over and caused some damage. We saw one of these come off Mark Martin's car. That's what caused that big pile up in turn three. No indication as to whether this is a good year or a Hoosier, but it is an indication that maybe these tires aren't up to the heat and the speed tonight here in Charlotte Motor Speed. And the speed's ready to climb. The sun is setting and the temperature is dropping. Average of 145 a year ago when Earnhardt set the new 600 record. We've had six caution, 30 of the laps run thus far, 214, have been under a yellow flag. Going up front, and here you see the battle. Changes thus far. Caution for that big crash moments ago. Incidentally, injured yesterday. In that crash in Haines Redway talked to him in the hospital this morning. Has a broken right leg, has a broken shoulder. That is bell rung. Hopes to be back in three to four weeks. Chad's car out in Grand National Competition over the next two or three years shows. Here's Rusty Ball is still in first group. Bernie Irvin trying to chase him down. The 1991 is staying right there in first place. Incidentally, Greg Sachs is back in the race after the Clever Men's Repair Shop. Remember that was the white man 77 that sort of got bounced around in two ball style. Challenge coming down on the inside. Coming to lap 218. Bounce and shuffle, and Ernie Irvin goes back into the lead another time. How much strategy plays into this race, Ernie? how close it is after 300 plus miles further back there you see the Earnhardt car number three he's having trouble with Joe Nemechek Nemechek giving him all these cars are six and five tenths back from the lead you see Jared in there Jared is seventh now here comes Earnhardt back on the inside Gant is in that group, and remember, he's in the lead lap. They actually are going to put a black flag on him about 100 laps ago. There's some smoke pouring out of the car. Thank goodness they didn't. Here he comes. He's up there under Dale Jarrett. And we have Earnhardt to seven. Gant to eight. Jarrett falls to nine. Nima checks about to get Seventeen. Walter goes back to the garage. Right over by the Unical fueling station. Didn't go to the garage. Pulled right over there, and they're going to work another time. Randy's there. Well, it, it, they have found it. It is the fuel cell. They, they've got a pickup problem. They went to Steve Grissom's team and. Uh, they, they asked them if they could have a fuel cell. Matter of fact, it is coming in now on the back side of the car uh -oh. over near the deck. Oh, 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 oh there is Lavani's car again in trouble. And it's also again right side torn up. Gary Lavani back in. Gary Cole spins back in the car. It'd be a straightaway, and everybody's just getting by. The 98 car of Cole spun across the grass and ended up right on the start finish line.
much going there. Fun. Get all the cornflakes, guys. <laughs> he, he just looked forward to it in the morning. They took me a rice crispy snack rack on the bottom out there. There they got that. Take a look at what happened. Five gets oh, okay. loose. Yeah, he lost the deal. Something. Yeah, what happened there, I don't know. Just, just took off. They wasn't nobody close enough. It just took off. But it's real rough, there. I understand that. Now that's what 170 miles an hour. Gant made yeah, a good move. He yeah. almost he missed the ball. Almost got got it all under there. Yeah, the Get it right now. Come up on the also slowed the car way the down car. too. Yeah, he's come out of there. Yeah. Caught him in the right front. And Derek just spun to try to miss over there. There's the 33 in. Bernhardt back in another time. Dick Bergman is there. We're going to work on the nose of this car, kids, who are to try to get it close and they're not going to replace the whole nose, and they're going to put a piece on the bottom. They just added a little piece of uh, fiberglass on the bottom of this nose to try to get the air working through the radio a little bit better. drilling away and they're going to put aluminum rivets in there to try to hold this piece down and get Earnhardt's nose squared away. Yeah, that piece they're putting on there is not to make the car run cooler. That there is to keep it running on the ground uh, because the air gets all up under the car and then the car raises when it gets to the corner and you can't turn the car. We'll take a break right now and then be back with more. The Coca-Cola 600. Winston Cup Stock Car Racing on TBS today. Harry Gant coming back out after repairs. Stay with us. Derek Cope, you're on board in car number 98. See better day here at Charlotte. It's not been good for him thus far, and you see the five car coming in Lamonti. It's all beaten up. Let's go down to Kenny Wallace. Okay, guys, we're down here in the garage area for everybody that can't see all these wrecks that are happening. The garage is filling up, but this is how everybody's finding out what's going on down here in the garage area. The family channel, Holler, has got two TV monitors. You can see me on there right now. This is what's happening down here. It's getting pretty busy, and this is how everybody is keeping tabs on the racetrack. Dick Bergen, next, over to you. Well, Ernie Irvin came in, and they are just about touching these cars now, Kenny Wallace. He just put a little, took a little tape off the nose of the thing, and Rusty Wallace's car, they took a little bit of wedge out of it, but most of the guys running up front seem happy with their cars. Randy? Well, uh, Joe Nimichek came in. They took on four tires. Likewise for Jeff Bodine in the seven car. Kyle Petty messing with his toe in. Of course, he was involved in the wreck two uh, cautions ago. Johnny Andretti, that team, unbelievable. I just talked to them. They're on their 17th pit stop of the day. You remember they caused the very first caution of the day. They've worked on that car all day with uh, cosmetic work. Uh, Dale Jarrett made a, a big adjustment. They moved the track bar, the rear of the car. That's a major adjustment. Richard Petty could probably comment more on that. And Kenny Schrader was also in. Check the toe in on that car. But the Dale Jarrett car, uh, major adjustment there. To the STP pit center. Well, while we watch these cars circulate under caution, we want to remind you that this is your opportunity to pick up a copy of the official directory for NASCAR and the Winston Cup Series. It's from Bell South Advertising. We've got a copy here. We've been checking it out here in the pit center tonight. Easy to get. $24.95 is the cost plus shipping and handling, and you can dial this number 1 800 RACE 345. This will give you all the information if you've never been to a new Winston Cup track, a place you're visiting for the first time this year. Get a directory. It'll give you directions on how to get there, where to stay, where to eat, entertainment places you can enjoy as you can as you enjoy the 1994 Winston Cup season. We had problems back in March when we came to you from Richmond because we were flooded with orders. Well, now we've got many more operators ready to take your orders at 1-800-RACE-345, the official directory of NASCAR and the Winston Cup Series from Bell South. And gentlemen, a lot of these drivers need a directory to get their cars put back together and get back on the racetrack. Well, for distance today, Andretti gets first place. He has already driven 840 miles, making a big deal on the rest of Wallace leading this. And he's only gone, what, 342 bridges. And that Andretti, he's back to 30th yeah. spot. Right, he's still gaining them. He's still got some more laps, <laughs> more miles to put in. They really put it in, that's for sure. So, uh, pit stops have been the order of the day. It's changed things a bit up on the wall with Wallace, Irvin, Bodine, Gordon, the first four, Morgan Shepard, fifth. Ricky Rudd, he came in for a moment. That put Nemechek to six, moved Dale Jarrett to seventh, Harry Gant back to eighth. Gant is staying out there after that 
incident. Earnhardt ninth and then Rudd. And uh, let's go to Dick Burke. Well, big squabble down here in Earnhardt's pit. NASCAR is concerned about the aerodynamic changes they're making to the nose of the car and asked them to bring it more into line with the way the car was before the accident. Uh, they're down here with a pair of tin snips now on the fiberglass, cutting away a little bit off the bottom to try to do that. I mean, it's not like you've got a situation where you can exactly and carefully measure it, but we do have an NASCAR official standing here with a tape measure, and he measured it. I'll guarantee it. I don't think it'll fit the template no matter what. I'm not worried about the template. <laughs> Saw Richard Children out there with Gaffer's tape trying to hold that thing together. <laughs> so the word is out. Taking advantage of the beaten up front end to try to fix the aerodynamics a little better. The first half, the first three uh, good quarter of the race, no no cautions, no wrecks, no yeah. nothing. And now we've got about half the field running around there with tape all over them and some wire and everything. Richard, up, you know. Richard Petty, did you ever be in one of those races where you really got the, the snout hit and then it ran better? Yeah, I've, I've done a lot of much better. You wind up getting in a wreck, and I don't know that the car runs better. It just makes you so mad you make it run better. I think sometimes that uh, you just get so frustrated, you say, the heck with what <laughs> it looks like, how it's doing, you just go do the job. So, yeah, we've, we've run better after we've got the race. This, this Richard, laps one through 90. No yellows. Laps 91 through 229, seven. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what he's doing. You know, the deal is about everybody's got hit of somewhere. Yeah. You know, I noticed our car kept coming in and stuff. He's been in about 14 times putting on tape trying to keep the hood down and fenders from blocking. Uh, Daryl Walter coming back on the track in car number 17. He's back out another time as they get in the field lined up to go racing at lap two. down to the inside to give them plenty of room. And he comes out with a different way. Walter's back up there after another single lap. It's the second time that he's done this. Not looking like he gets about to be right. He looks that past. He ain't had to keep it out. Frank, the past he didn't do. The two-car had the 28 out flank. And there he's back up there. And there's the seven car sitting there watching. Forge first, second, third. Cars look so rock solid when you see them come on the back out, and there are two cars coming back on it. Jeff they up there using their tires up, and the seven cars sitting there saving it. Wallace stays back a bit for a moment, now makes another run off four. Jeff Gordon definitely closing that Chevy in from fourth position. Still side by side for first. Jeff Ledine back there in third says if you try to save your equipment at Charlotte, you're going to go backwards. Making the pass right now is Morgan Shepard. Last five, last five. He changes down through here. So look at Shepard. Not particularly a great story for him, but he certainly would like to rewrite it for today. And the Woodrunners. Been 36 races since Morgan Shepard has won. There he goes for the lead. Right now, the car 21. His last win out of the car that he played the track. So you got Nemechek and uh, he's right back, uh, back up there with him again. Here comes Earnhardt. Let me correct that. As you see.
see Shepard comes up. That places him third. Still Wallace and Bodine to deal with, Richard. Still Wallace versus Mark and Shepard right there. 600 wins for the Wood Brothers over the years. Love to make it five on the efforts of Morgan Shepard today. At 2:37, here's Wallace first. They're going to come in and check him again. <laughs> <laughs> the Kenny Wall. Okay, guys, I got Jeff and here. We made history of John Stewart. John had a tough day. I don't know, Rusty. Uh, it was, uh, you know, we were just struggling along, and, and uh, you know, we just didn't get the hand on the car. Plus, you know, we like it. Challenging Gordon again, fighting with Irvin. There's his mom. made up a lap as he did a year ago. Will Dale Earnhardt become the first man to win the 600 three times in a row? Rusty Wallace stays in first in car number two, but the story is right here. Earnhardt, they popped the cork on that one, and he has moved all the way to second, following the third. There's the battle. Morgan Shepard in second for a moment, then back comes Earnhardt. Incidentally, Mark Martin is back in the race. After the 38 minutes of the third job, after the last four seconds, Chevy and Ford. Shepard alongside, right behind him, the 24 of 22-year-old Jeff Gordon. He's got a good look at what's going on up there. And Wallace out in front of this crowd by about 25, 30 car lengths. He says one and nine ten seconds between first and second place war. Further back, you see the 43, Dahlenbach, still out there going with car number 20 with Joy. They're back in 20th, 21st position. Yeah, they've been having a heck of a Around Jeff Burton, they come. Jeff Burton, Burton. Jeff Gordon got loose further down here. 
people think that Dale Earnhardt is off to a slow start this year in his quest for another Winston Cup championship. Here's how he compares to last season when he won the title after 10 races. Three wins already at eight top 10 finishes. Dale loves to race for the title, whether he's losing the pass or chasing her. I like to lose the pass. Uh, you know, I don't get to a lot. Uh, do, do you know, you run a good, you can sit and you run up there with him and match him. I take it any way. I like to race. Racing and chasing them. They chasing me, whatever. <laughs> racing and chasing them, and they're chasing him right now. Bernhardt back in the lead. Racing and chasing, that's for sure. Bernhardt comes in, uses up 21. He uses up 21. He's coming off the track. He's taking the whole racetrack. That's the second place. He's going to be in the first. Life better than two seconds. Jeff up in there now. Jeff and Jeff, all right. Dick Bergren standing by with car owner. Running Richard Childers for number three. The question is, Richard, have you got the car adjusted that well, or is this a demonstration of your driver's ability? Well, you know, we've all been working on the car. You know, we, it was heating a little bit after the wreck. Now we're taking up the position of the car. You know, that's what's the matter with it. And you know, we're hoping we'd be right when the sun went down from the road before it. You know, now Dale's just driving his heart out like he does every week. And, you know, all these guys, but they have to get it back out there. So, you know, we'll just see how it comes out. A well, basic complete team effort again. 379 miles have been completed as Wallace has pulled away from that second, third, and fourth place battle. As they continue to slug it out there, it was an advantage for Wallace. It's now better than two seconds, three and three tenths as they continue to duke it out. Back there in the second spot, he just drove on into the darkness. So now Earnhardt's away. The sunset. No. Okay. Under the lights. Under the lights, Ricky. From the sunset into the lights. Okay. That's it. They still racing. No sunset yet. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh place cars all within 20 yards of each other. Earnhardt, Shepard, Gordon, Bogart, and all in there. And here comes Morgan right back again. Take third place for him. We're going for it. Yeah, Rusty's leading the race. Nobody's paying attention to him. Richard, I'd really like the folks to see that moment when Earnhardt got under Bodine here. Take a look at replay, even though we are great way. Take a look at this. This is about six laps ago. We were in commercial. This moves just enough. <laughs> you know, now now he's trying to gather it up. There comes Jeff Warden under him also. He was lucky to gather it up. That that doesn't look like much, believe me. It's that thing moves a little. But once it breaks loose, you have a heck of a time getting that thing moved back down so that it looks great. Back with the live and watching as Bodine works Gordon. This is the fourth. Here comes Gordon right back. Not willing to give it in. Gordon on the outside. Bodine. There's Nemechek watching, watching that race. Yes, and Ernie Urban's right there, too, with the Catbird seat to view it from. Stay with us. 257 laps are now complete in the Coca-Cola 600, 385 and a half miles. Joe Nemechek has just slammed the wall in turn four and slid all the way down the track to land right at the start finish line. He actually crossed it by about two feet and lies in the trademark of the sponsor of the race. That's one way to get their attention. This is how Earnhardt got down a while ago. If you remember, he stopped, and just as he'd stopped and went back out, he got a lap down, they had a caution, everybody got a free stop. They're going to do the same thing to it right now. And the point we were about to make, the story we were following was that once again, Dale Earnhardt has been thwarted here. He got all the way up, was trying to chase Rusty Wallace down, then made an unscheduled stop. Just as he came back out, he had gone a lap down. That was when Nemechek had this problem that put him into the grass. Take a look at what happened to Nemechek. He comes off that Blew a tire is what he's saying yeah, on the radio. And that's what it looked like, because he, he didn't come out and turn the car. It just... He was out about two-thirds, and it just went straight. In fact, you can see the marks from here. You can see where they hit the wall. 
running in fifth place when car 41 slapped the wall and slapped it hard. Now you see Earnhardt back on the track. He made that unscheduled stop. Like to get more on that story uh, from Dick Bergren. <laughs> Attention all drivers spinning through the. That's a humpy wheeler sign. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, they're going to have to line up, Richard. They've, everybody's yeah. tried to mow uh, Humpy's he grass to, out here today. They're going to have to get him a bunch of whoops. Well, let's hope that Nemechek's all right. We see the uh, safety folks out there working with him. He really slapped that wall. He's okay. All right, we'll take a quick commercial break and come back and get more on the Earnhardt story for you as Darrell Waltrip is again coming back out to give it another go. 264 laps, 396 miles complete. And with this caution out for Joe Nemechek, everybody taking advantage and getting in the pits, getting new tires, taking on fuel. Let's go back to that stop by Dale Earnhardt and get more on the story from Dr. Dick Burke. Well, he had been running along just fine. Can we see this on replay? He had been running along just fine, came in, took a pit stop. The problem was this tire right here. The tire obviously lost its, its tread, and that is the reason for this pit stop. Right rear tire is the one that failed while he was in here, while this action was going on. Rusty Wallace, the leader, passed him, putting Earnhardt a lap down. I think Earnhardt has made more pit stops at this point by far than any other driver out here. Now he's got a lap to make up. He hopes to win this race. That pit stop was 19 and 3 10 seconds. But remember, there is that speed limit. What was the speed limit this morning, Richard? 55, 55, miles. 55, 55 miles an hour on pit road. And he went down a lap again. He's made it up once. Can he do it a second time today? And look at the front of that. That looks like a St. Nick's Arena flight in the old days. <laughs> Ten rounder. Wallace first. Jeff Gordon now second. When he was in third. Morgan Shepard fourth. Dale Jarrett is fifth. Jeff Bodine is in sixth. Let's go to the STP pit center. Kennedy joined by Ward Burton, driver of car number 31. Car Ward, uh, you were involved in that mix-up with Mark Martin when apparently a tire of his came apart earlier. What's going on out there at this point? Well, it's kind of hard for me to tell uh, sitting in the cockpit, but it looks like they have a problem with tires. You know, Hoosier and uh, Goodyear both have good products, and uh, some of them get one better than the other, but uh, I'd like to say something about my Hornet crew. I think, sure. you know, we've been struggling. I think they did a pretty good job today. We're running good, and we got a lap down the pits, and we know we need to practice there, but we're coming. You ran good. You were running up, I believe, in the top 15 when that mix up took place. You were in good shape for a good finish over there today. Of all the cars you see out here at this point, uh, you've got some Goodyear cars, some Hoosier cars running up front. Who do you think is the strongest at this point? Uh, of course, uh, the three car, if he gets a lap back, which I'm sure he will up there, he'll, uh, he's going to be a threat. All these cars right in here are a threat 28 to 2. Uh, Jeff Gordon. Some of these lap cars are running real good, too. Uh, you know, it's easy for one of them to get a lap back. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's possible they could. Uh, can't cut anybody out. A bunch of good cars. Earnhardt's on the tail end of the lead lap. Thank you, Ward Burton. Thank you. Yeah, they put him right on the tail. They put him up to the top side. That's kind of a surprise on Earnhardt. Well, I see he's not a lap down. middle as he splits them and moves beneath the Jeff Gordon car. Urban. He's ready to challenge. Rusty Wallace for the lead. Earnhardt is not your lead. He's the tail in the lead lap. The number 30 car is not in the lead lap. Well, no, okay. I saw it right there. <laughs> my George, there's the well, other lap. And he won't be one lap down if he can get in front of the two cars. That's right. Oh, right. That's, That's what you're doing. Right. So Rusty stays first. Here's Urban trying to chase him again. It's Ford's first and second. Bill Jarrett fighting for the 18, but Morgan Shepard up on the outside. Here you can just 
see everything. Yeah. That's too much. <laughs> Stays first, Urban second, Shepard third, Jeff Gordon is in fourth now. Jared back with Ben Bodine sixth, Ricky Rudd seventh, again in eighth. Those are all in the lead lap and in the top ten now. It's Chuck Bound. Chuck Bound in the Bobby Allison car and Bernhardt. Bernhardt on the other uh, car. Nick Bernhardt, the ninth car in that lead lap. And then go back to tenth place and give that position to Chuck Bound. Race story out here on what we've seen thus far. As we review, if you're just joining us, some of the leaders that have had an opportunity with the out in front. Jeff Bodine has crashed out of the race. Jeff Bodine still out there. Jeff has really had a good run. And he stays in fourth at the present time. Goodyear is running one, two, three, four, five. First two. Going around Derek Cope, and with him comes Jeff Gordon. 18 car, fifth. There's the Fram race story for you, so you got an idea about who's been leading and where the car is thus far in the race. Jeff Gordon throws it in on Morgan Shepard for the third spot. Jeff Gordon. And Gordon back in the sixth position. He's seen him right right there. Got out of the way. That's <laughs> Whoa. So you have Ernie Irvin back to the lead. Wallace to second. And again, Earnhardt has made up his lap. He just keeps digging. Shepard takes fourth. Shepard falls to fifth. They don't dare go away from this one here. Two car back again. The 20, 28 went in there and he went high. Wallace to lead another time. That's the 16th official lead change. The only official lead changes are counted in the start finish line. They've been swapping around a lot more than that. Some of these laps back and forth. That's an official lead change after the strike. So Wallace takes command. Rusty's led 103 laps today. Bodine's led 97. Ernie's had a crack at it a few times. 
see uh, Rusty Wallace's crew looking on. We're at lap 79. We can look a little further back at Ricky Rudd. And the time that is Todd Bodine, who is a lap down alongside in number 75. Ricky Rudd is seventh right now. And there you see the Chuck Bound car, the Allison car, number 12. They may get a uh, full sponsor. That car's been running. Well, he's, he's, he's one lap. Yep. And uh, they say that Teletron, a company out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, is going to try to come to and support the Bobby Allison truck. 75 and 5th for a race for the first place. It happened to get back. Complete. Ricky Rudd hard at it out here. Jeff Bodine stays up in that sixth position. We'll have more of the 600 in a moment. Rusty Wallace trying desperately to put Earnhardt a lap down. He's almost caught him twice. Earnhardt trying to have no part of it. Then back in second spot, it is Jeff Gordon. That's followed by Ernie Irvin and Dale Jarrett. Let's go down to the pit area. Talk about the man who started outside of the front row today. Kenny Wallace. Yeah, I got Joe Nemechek. Joe, you've been awesome for two weeks here. You set a new track record. Your car was flying. Just being patient, what happened? I'm not real sure, but I think we end up breaking a right front rotor. It shook real bad, and then all of a sudden it just turned and went straight in the wall. Tough break for the Meineke Chevrolet. We were finally hooked up. We got a good break. Guys at the motor shop did an excellent job on the engine. Excellent race car. This isn't where we're supposed to meet, but uh, I'm all right. All the time we're for sure you've had a tough year but if you haven't proved yourself in the last few weeks of Charlotte, that's, right. that's right you know just everything's coming together it takes time uh, but charlotte's a place i like you know we had a good bush car yesterday we broke a motor uh, i thought we had a chance of winning in this race so we'll be ready for next week okay back to you guys larry and sue hedrick the owners of that car heart and soul in it giving it their best shot along with joe namachek well, look at Wallace still trying to deal with Earnhardt and try to contain him and get him a lap down. Here comes Ernie Urban working again on Jeff Gordon and he's going to get it this time around for second spot. They continue to dice and slice this race up every yeah. which way. No, they, they have really been racing. Now they, you, nobody can go home and say they didn't see, see a, a bunch race. of racing going on. Now they have really, really tried. There you go. Five cars right up there, and they all run the same speed. It's just who makes the slip and who doesn't, and who has the right car and the tire combination in that particular pit stop. Dale Jarrett's on the move again. He's coming back. He's getting under Ernie Urban. There's Dale Jarrett right there beneath Ernie Urban and switching uh, that third and fourth spot around. Here's yeah. Randy. Former Washington Redskins football coach, Super Bowl winner Joe Gibbs owns this team, but this is the quarterback, Jimmy Maycar. Jimmy, we saw you make an adjustment before, maybe possibly on the track bar. Has that helped you here? Well, actually, it really didn't help as much as we thought it might. Uh, just a little bit. The car's been real tight all day long. We've been trying to work it out. We, we made another adjustment after that, took a couple more rounds of wedge out of it. And it seems to be a little bit better, but we're still not quite like, like we want to be. And I think we can never get it there on a the shot of this thing, but it's uh, I don't know if we'll get there or not. He may have to do it on his own. But we're going to have to do the car's running right now. He's doing a great job. We're, we're where we want to be, right at the front of the pack. And uh, just have to wait and see what happens. Sorry, but Jimmy Maycar, brother-in-law, the man in that 18 car. They've only had two top 10 finishes this year. This is what it's all about. And you see what's happened here. Rusty Wallace has accomplished what he set out to do. He's put the cap back on the bottle. Car number three. Put him a lap down. I'd like to keep him there. Want to bet that he can? Yeah, he got him there. And the three's fading again. You're dead on. Jeff Gordon getting him. Jimmy Spencer down at the bottom just in front of the McDonald's car. He's not been a factor today. Dale Jarrett, been 16 months since uh, you visited Victory Lane and about uh, forgotten what it felt like, we understand. Yeah, we about forgot about that. We've used it up 
pretty much here. So, uh, yes, yeah, time for another win. This would be a good place to get us started. You know, I, I like the racetrack. We've run well here. Uh, and 600 miles, I think it suits us because we tend to, to get better as the race goes on. And then that's the way it's been in the past. It hasn't been this year. So uh, we're looking to get back to that. And uh, we need a good run. Good run they're getting. Jarrett so staying right up here with the pack in third spot. Urban back and forth. Shepard is fifth. Jeff will nine six. Ricky Rudd is seventh. Harry Gant lies eighth, and Harry is still in that lead lap. <laughs> he's not running. He's, he's been running there all day long. Just idling along, idling along. Got close to that record. Dennis Bender and stuff all day. He's still digging. Joe Gibbs looking on. He wants to send in the defensive unit right now. <laughs> well, right now he's still kind of calm. They still got a long way to go here. We still got over 100 laps to go, so he's not worried about it yet. 294 on the board. Again, to look for the conclusion of this one. I don't know how they can do anything in the last 100 miles to trump what we've seen thus far, Richard. Nice little lap. I know what you're doing. They sailed pretty well in the beginning, and we had all the incidents with the wreck fans. And then they got rid of that, and now we're back. Now they've got a great race. This is a lot better race than they did in the beginning. I don't know where the cool air and stuff is making the cars work better, handle better, or whatever. Wallace Everything seems there. to be working good. You know. Wallace seems to be working the best at present. Second, Jared, third, and saw Ernie Irvin right there. He's also put a lap on her heart. This next pit stop will be pretty interesting out here. Car number 43 is pitting right now. Wallace Dalton back pulling down on pit road. In the Petty STP Enterprises car. Got some black marks on the side of that thing, a bunch of tape on the hood of it. I think this is just a routine pit stop. I think they're just doing it for tires. The last four or five laps, he's really slowed down. So they'll put the tires on and speed him back up a little bit. 19th positions where he was running. I didn't think you could run a Petty car unless you uh, you had tire marks on the side of it. I thought that was. Don't be talking like that. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, it really sure. always helped, right? <laughs> it kind of speeded me up. It did? Know? Yeah. Well, I had a new car. I tried to be real careful. Once I got black marks on it, I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the 19th place car, Wally Dallenbach, is back on the track. Coming down to 300 laps complete in three will be 450 miles into this thing. Looking down on the last 100. Lap 301, another change of leadership. First time Jeff Gordon has led since the very first lap in the race. Take a look at how he did it. Rusty Wallace in first at Ford, and here comes that Chevy down to the bottom. Sticks and takes home that front position for a lap or two. Here you see Jerry. Wallace working the bottom, and he's got it. Yes, <laughs> and he worked down there that time. Let's see Kyle Petty's car back on. He was watching out for him. There you see Kyle Petty's number 42 back. Jared's got by him. Jared's in the second place. Six car lengths to catch him. Let's take a look further back here in the field. I tell you, drivers having a great day is Lloyd Allen. Hooters car is running 13. That's the best run he's had in the Winston Cup race. And remember, he came out and set on the pole at Daytona, started 37th here today. And Lloyd Allen right now continues in the 13th position. Hooters T Bird. He was the first choice. First to take over for Alan Kowicki. Well, There's a big down, lap about that. Earnhardt down pit road again. Here's Earnhardt back. Yes, indeed. Car number three is in. And that could be really bad news. Let's see what they're going to do down here. They bring in the good wrench Chevrolet. Out there for tires. Dick Bergman is there. Well, absolutely everything is going on. Earnhardt's taking more tires. The ones they're taking out do not appear to be blistered. Rusty Wallace is just below Earnhardt, and that means Earnhardt is packed down the left. Well, another four-tire chase for Earnhardt. It's 19.1, but he lost the lap, and that's the critical part of this thing. They're still making adjustments on the chassis. You can see him there working on the right rear. So now he's two laps down. I don't know, I don't know where he's going to go now. This, this is 
this is a whole different perspective from where he's got to come from. Yeah, 305 laps into this race. That's not long. Musgraves having a good race out here as well in car number 16 started back in uh, 42nd position he's up to 15 and he is 10th uh, in points these days Musgrave in 16 drove that Jasper car a year ago for DK it's up the second Roush ride he's having a very good run you see it in here right behind number 30 Michael Walter who stays at 11 at the present time Put a lap on Jeff Burton in number eight. Now take another gander at this one. There is the seventh car going up on the outside, and Darrell Waltrip. They seem to have got that car. He's got the game. He's working on that one again. Yeah. Yep. So again for nine in good spot. He's the first car to lose his top five. around inside the car when they do that. Those cars are about four seconds back to the leader as you look at it from the Revesta stereo platform. About four seconds back from Wallace Jarrett up there in the lead. The 17 car of Walter, we might catch you up on him. He's well back. He's only completed 244 laps. He's riding in 32nd position. He was in a long time. Ago. A lot of those single laps came back out front of the fields on 308 and there you see Chuck Bound back to the attack. Bound having a good race staying 10th now just a lap down from the leaders. Well, they just come in and change tires. That's all they do. The the complexion of this race somewhat. Yeah, Jeff Wynne has been complaining that the car has been loose. Two pit stops ago, it was, oh, there's a lead change right there. Rusty Wallace going back down. So now, Dale Jarrett gets a chance to command this thing. Waited a while for this opportunity. They were just talking to the chief mechanic. They said they didn't have a hammer too good and making some more adjustments. But right now, he's got the best adjustment the car out there. They better not miss it. Seventh different leader today, Richard. Uh, Dale Jarrett. This 94 finish was that fourth down at Darlington. Still some yeah, distance they, to travel. After that one Daytona, they had a couple of good years. I mean, good races, and then uh, this year's been really bad. For well, third spot, Shepard around four. Back to fourth. They did swap positions. Riding with Jeff Gordon now as he looks at Morgan Shepard. Tries to counter attack. 311. And Coca-Cola, 600 from Charlotte. Lights are on again at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. A week ago Saturday night, they were on for the Winston Select. Had a great battle. Jeff Bodine came out on top. He continues to stay up in the top eight tonight in that lead lap. He's running in fourth. The man to talk about is Dale Jarrett. The man to talk about is first of all. First and second. Back out in the lead now as the last week of the There you see the nine car, Rich Victor, Melling car. Great success with that. The days come back to those Melling folks and certainly give them a lot to the sport. Something happened to his right foot drive and he it down. So Morgan Shepard driving in third place, slaps the wall and turn number one. That brings out another caution. This is lap 318 for Shepard. Showing 477 miles complete. Earnhardt is being shown in 11th spot. He's 
left-handed. Stood to lose 25 points to Urban. Then running six. Now attrition continuing to tell the story. As Morgan Shepard limps back onto pit road on car number 21. He just took him a long time to get that groove worked in. He'd been working on it, and it's finally started coming to him. Ooh, brakes are gone. He slapped the wall. He broke the line. Oh, he used that right oh, Take another look at it, yeah. Richard. Yeah. Watching the 21 car come back after it got cuffed big time. Sorry, I said anything. I was going to watch it. He runs the wall. You certainly picked the fine time. <laughs> Sorry to watch about you. that, yeah. I think the five folks at home appreciate it. <laughs> Jared Pitting, Wallace Pitting, Gordon, everybody coming in, all the top of the field. This at lap 319. This will not get them home, will it? No. Oh, no. They, they can run about 60 laps. That's about what nobody's trying to cheat that right now. Later on, we might. Right okay. Now, okay, we're watching as the 18 comes in. You see the two car pits. Well, let's go to Randy. Well, Rusty Wallace is in, keeping the idols up on his four Thunderbird. Billy Wilbur on the right side. Jack already dropped. This is the quickest, this is the quickest pit crew in the business. Dale Jarrett's team down below. They're on the uh, back side of the pit road here. Dale Jarrett now on the left hand side. Rusty Wallace and team down and away. Dale Jarrett down and away. Great pit stop for both organizations. Give you some times on those. The two car first. The two car was a 16 and 7. Jared Clark, 18 9 on the Jared Clark. So we're under caution. It's lap 319, and it's getting towards show and tell time with Wallace in first, Jared in second. More to come from the Coca Cola 600. 43 cars started the event. Pace cars about to come in. Lap 323 when they hit the marker. begin to get the illusion of speed. John Robbins' fiance, Jeff Clark. Mark Martin's part of the six is going to roll back up pit road this time. Take a look here as Earnhardt struggles down to the bottom, tries to get a lap back. 328 complete. 
people got talent. He just wants to do it so bad. No matter what the circumstances is, he's going to do it. There's just very few people who have the kind of determination, ability, and all that stuff fit into one person. He's made up a lap. Now he's one down. Plus almost a full lap. Right now, thank you. But it's not falling. So we'll be back with more of the 600 shortly here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Stay with us for all the action here on TBS. Back live at the Charlotte Motor Speedway on a Sunday night, the Coca-Cola 600 in the final stages tonight. About 60, 70 laps to go here, and it's getting down to quite a battle. We've got several cars running up front. It's been a dandy so far, and I'm sure the last 50 or 60 laps are going to be even more wonderful. Now, all season long, the United Auto Workers and General Motors team up to build great automobiles all across North America, and they've teamed up to get involved in racing. We're sponsoring the Teamwork of Excellence Award. We're going to select a winning team tonight. That team will get $5,000 for their great teamwork here in the Coca-Cola 600. There'll be points tallied all season long. At the end of the year, the winning team gets $50,000. Just another example of the teamwork exemplified by UAW and G. And we've got our own brand of teamwork here on TBS as we bring you our coverage of Winston Cup and Bush Grand National Races. Daryl Waltrip had some advice for the newest member of our broadcast team earlier this weekend. Yeah, Richard, you do all the talking. Don't let Ken, don't let Ken uh, say too much. You'll be a lot better off. <laughs> A man who certainly knows what to say and when to say it, Daryl Waltrip. And we want to welcome certainly Richard Penny, the newest member of our team. Yeah, what a team player old DW is, huh? Well, yeah, he's, he's a lot of help, right? <laughs> I, I used to race with him, so I know where he's coming from, what, what he's acting for, you know? Okay, we're down to 100 miles to go on this thing. Time to get down to the program and, and get this resolved. What's going to make the difference in this last 100? You still got seven cars in that lead lap. Really good candidates. Wallace, Bodine is up there. Jared is up there. Jeff Gordon hasn't given up much tonight at all. He's falling back to fourth for the moment. You get the feeling he's going to come back. Ernie Urban, Ricky Rudd, and Harry Gant is still there in that lead lap. <laughs> yeah, Harry's still digging. They, they can't take anything away from him. Really, what this is going to come down to right now is uh, the laps and stuff that we've got left. If it's a green flag stop, if it's a green flag stop, then Wallace has got the better. Pit crews and uh, it's going to be tough to beat them. If it comes and goes ahead and runs and they happen to have a caution for the last uh, part of the better than the team, then it's your turn. Well, okay. Now at lap 29, 39, 339. So as the picture gets drawn here, you see Earnhardt again fighting his way back up still again to take that lap back. He is sure tenacious. He's exactly what you said, Richard. Deep term. He's out there. He runs that car. And if he's 10 laps behind, he's out there to do a job. That's to do the best he can with the equipment he's got. But he enjoys doing it. That's the main. That's the difference in, in him. They've got everything going for him, and they can do the job. But they're looking at the monetary deal, or they're looking for whatever. You know, Earnhardt's just going to go do it, and he says, if I do it good enough, I'll make money. That's good. How many laps are going to come back to the line? Now, wasn't it 13 or 14? Uh, 12, 12, 14 laps. Uh, 500, 500, 500 laps race. 
race in Nashville, Tennessee. He crashed real early in the race and knocked everything in front of him and back him in and that kind of That was one of the races where you said, no way this car could even get through the race. Like, you know, I believe everybody was in the race. Ned Jarrett did that one time, I think, too. Somewhere came from ball line to line. He made a bunch of time at ball line at time, but uh, big deal was he ran good, but a lot of other people had problems. But anytime you're that ball line, people got to have problems. You can make up three or four laps for the week, but uh, circumstances have to be changed. So Wallace still struggling to keep Earnhardt those laps down, and Earnhardt trying to jump the car to get back. And even though this isn't for position, this is something to keep this out of the outfield. See them knock each other out like they did the other night, but that would be certainly uh, They don't mind racing with each other. They, I think they try to intimidate each other. Uh, neither one of them will give an inch, all of them are trying to do whatever the same thing is. And, you know, they, uh, you know, that's the end of the end of the race strategy. See what they plan to do and go first to Randy Cooper. Buddy Parrot up here uh, talking to Rusty on the radio. Buddy, 56 to go. When do you pick? the first pit stop and you wait for somebody else to come in when do you do it well um clean the race i think uh we can kind of follow the you know they'll follow us and do what we do but uh they'll leave her down about 40 laps to go and uh make a pit stop okay that's the strategy from the two pit i'm with jimmy may Strategy for the end of the race. And on the gas. Never did. Uh oh. Something's happening. Uh, 18 backing up, and Jeff Gordon tapped him as they came through turn three. Ali collects it back up, and they run side by side. Standings are it's Ford in first, Ford in second, Chevy in third, Perkins Ford in fifth, Ricky Rudd's Ford is sixth, Harry Gantz in seventh. The best we can do for Pontiac is tenth right now for Michael Walter. Yeah, he's been struggling on running good staying out of trouble. That's why he's got that car. Ford and Chevy tied in the manufacturer's battle this year. The two eleven races in the Winston Cup series. Jeff Gordon, just 22 years old, and says he's already won 600 races. Do you feel that he has that same determination? He's so young. Not all together. You know, uh, he's, he's coming through at a different uh, time, a different age, uh, different circumstances. Earnhardt had to work with everything he's got here. I'm not sure if he's not having a lot different school and it's hard to beat that school Second now, and he's uh, the only only car in the first uh, ten, I guess, that's got on the Hoosier tires. Everybody else has had trouble. But he's coming on. Uh, 11th is uh, Loy Allen, okay. Richard. He's on okay. Hoosiers. Take a look at the Sears Craftsman upcoming TBS Winston Cup races. July the 17th, the Miller Genuine Draft 500 from the two and a half mile track of Pocono, Pennsylvania. Then September 10th, Saturday night under the lights on the three quarter mile. Richmond, Virginia track. If you can still get a ticket to see that one under the lights, it's incredible. And then October 9th, we're right back here for the Mellow Yellow 500 in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's going to be a day. Wallace's race to win or lose. Right now, he has the advantage. He's trying to build on it. Jeff Bodine trying to find a way to capture him. They have another pit stop upcoming. Let's see what happens. Paul Andrews, crew chief for Jeff Bonine, coming down off the box for me. Paul, uh, if you don't 
37 miles in the rear view mirror as we get down to the side this Coca-Cola 635th car as Wallace stays in front but Wallace's lead is dwindling. Wallace's lead is being eroded as Bodine continues to clamber back into this thing. He lost him in a second and lost brakes. If he had lost brakes, he won, he won that one. It will for it. It will work very hard, guys. Just beyond the uh, 
top seven in that lead lap. Todd Lodine lies eight, a lap down. Earnhardt is there in ninth. Michael Walker two laps down in ten. Lloyd Allen four runs in eleven. Meanwhile, Chuck Bound finds himself three laps down at this juncture. He's in twelfth with car twelve, followed by Hutch Strickland, Sterling Marlin fourteenth, Bobby Hamilton fifteenth, Blake Speed, and Derek Cope is seventeenth. We're seeing a complete review here all through the field as we get down to the end of it. Yeah, there's Bill Elliott's number 11. Had to take a provisional start. Started 43rd, actually 42nd, because John Andretti came late. So, the 22nd has moved Bill Elliott. What a frustrating year for him yeah, for that entire game. Yeah, they run good, and then they don't run good. Most of the time, they don't run good. But they just never been able to put it all together this year. And I know how they feel. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, after Bill has been so good and won championships and won a bunch of races and uh, Junior's done the same thing, you've got winning people. They're just not getting it done. And, uh, you know, there's no one particular thing probably that's causing it. They don't know what's causing it. They're just not getting the job done. And we want to let you know who the Western Auto Mechanic of the race is. Ray Everham, the crew chief for Jeff Gordon is the winner of the award, the Western Auto Mechanic of the Race, posted tonight on Hats Off. Jeff may not win the race, but Ray Everham comes over the winner tonight here at Charlotte. This guy is really good. He used to be in the Irox. That was really good for those Boy, he is so great. Pretty good with what he's doing here. He sure is. Looks like the two boys getting away from the series. He was catching him pretty good after a while. The last four or five laps, he's kind of working back out there. Rusty Wallace, he tries to draw away. The car recalls midnight, and as it gets darker, it seems to be running stronger once it's again. It's getting closer to midnight, right? <laughs> in the Coca-Cola 600. Seven, they say, is getting ready to pit. On board with Jeff Gordon. Here comes Jeff. Jeff currently in third on pit road. Third of the leaders. Seven cars in that lead lap, making their pit stops now. Well, they're doing a good one. They're doing it one at a time. Let's That's watch them, you know. Hot <laughs> Strickland has pitted. He's back out again. Travis Carnival. Here's Randy. Well, Dale Jarrett is in. Uh, they've already done the right side tires on the interstate Chevy. Same thing for him. They've just radioed to uh, Jeff Bonine. They said, come on in this lap. So Jeff Bonine is also going to take on four tires, it appears. They want to leave him out and see as if see if he can catch a caution. A little over 18 seconds. Now Jeff Bonine rolls in the XI4. It's the right side tires going on. It surprises me that one team doesn't try to take on just two tires and give enough fuel, but evidently they need at least two cans of fuel, so they might as well go ahead and change them out. Pretty good stop so far on the blind car. Left side tires are on. Here's some different left nuts. Jack goes down, he's out. 17 point down, not a bad pitch stop. Let's see when they come out on the racetrack. 
so important. But they fall off the sack of the sack of high right quick, so they need all the time. Here's Gordon coming on pit road. And should be coming in shortly. And right. We'll go to Dick Bergman as Jeff Gordon makes his pit stop. Gordon's getting ready. I tried to get the red pepper, but they were going to do it. He said, I'll tell you after the stop. That's how late they are deciding what they are going to do. Gordon, right side tires. So no pepper on the left. No pepper on the left. So here we go. Pepper tire. Gordon, get it with two. Two for Second and pit stop. He gets in and gets out so good. Here's Waltrip back in 30th position on pit road. So he's now got a four and a half second lead uh, off of the seven car. It really wasn't but a half a second when they made the pit stop. Todd, Bod uh, Todd Bodine is back out. Randy LaJoy in the 20 car who is running in 18th position. Great stop by Ricky Rudd. Correction, a great stop by Jeff Gordon. Ricky Rudd should be leading right now. Rudd should be first. He should be showing, I believe, Bodine second. Not the way I read it. You want to see, <laughs> want to see Gordon second? Yeah. That I nine second good stop? I yeah. Can Trader pitting. Remember, he had trouble early in this race. Really strong for the final practice period, but the race game is not to be his. He's running to 24. Interval, first to second, stands at 14 seconds. The average speed is 1.25. Interval from second to third is two seconds. Really, that's where the race is going to come down to. Team trying to follow it out here. He like a caution right now. Man, he's not got a lap lead, so this really wouldn't be that big of an advantage. Mm -hmm. Except they, oh, everybody's going to stop this retire, so right. This drive is starting 13th on the day at lap 386. Slickest move for the race award. Ricky Rudd waiting. He's leading with 13 to go. He's put off his pit stop, hoping for a caution if it pays off for the driver of the tied Ford. The number 10, he could well go to victory lane here at Charlotte with that slick move. First to second. We've got it down to 11 seconds. What was it, 13? 14. And they are closing in on Rudd. Stretches it to lap 387, 388, 388 on the board now as they come by. 12 to go. Kenny Wallace is back in for Felix Sabetis another time. Ricky Rudd, he stays out there. A fine here again. Tend to go to 
this time by. Run first, fourth, second, Wallace, third, go down, fourth, Dale Parrott. Michael Waltrip in 10. It's Michael Waltrip, a purple heart for his effort tonight. That interval, which was 11 seconds, two laps ago, now it's eight seconds between the leader, Ricky Rudd and Jeff Gordon. Cuts it down some more at 7 9 now. Okay, the 10 course. Seven, eight. Go to Randy. Well, the tie crew waiting for Ricky Rudd to bring his forward down pit road. Ricky has called. They've calculated what they need. They need three seconds of that fuel can stuck in the nozzle. That's all they need. Three seconds. They can go the distance. They're going to blow off tires. No tires. Here we go. One one thousand. Two one thousand. Three one thousand. There goes Ricky Rudd. Two point eight. They try to hold on to something here. Jeff Gordon. Wallace the second. On to Jeff Gordon as he comes back. Jeff comes straight down in the middle. Snappy pit stop. There's Jeff Gordon's fiance. Looking on. He never heard victory left. takes first. Wallace hosts second. Bodine is third. Dale Jarrett fourth. Ricky Rudd falls to six is just in front of Harry Kane. Jeff Gordon seeking his first Winston Cup victory. Set on the pole. It's been a long time. Set on the pole. 1976. David Pearson. Jeff Gordon. Pittsburgh, Indiana. Well, Jeff's been stretching two seconds to right now, so he's really just out running the two car. Getting it on out there. Getting it done right now. Five laps to go and they combine this time. As Jeff Gordon at 22 years of age. Sensation driver. Did so well here a year ago. Had a brilliant run in this race. He's coming back. And doing the only thing he can do. That's a on one year ago. He played second in the event. Five to go. Putting a lap on Harry Gant. wins in 15 years of racing and he's 22. Two to go. Two laps remaining. Youngest winners of the year.
life in this race. Bobby Hillen was 22. happened here in this major race of the season the coca-cola 600 belongs to pittsburgh indiana's jeff gordon with a sensational run in the 35th annual coca-cola 600 to the pure later winner circle here's randy pember well jeff gordon is taking a few moments gives his uh, fiance brooke a hug it was very emotional when he came in here jeff gordon in absolute tears he finally wins his first ever Winston Cup victory here in one of the biggest races of them all, the Coca-Cola 600. Let me walk in here and try and get a word with this young man. Jeff, a fantastic day for you. A great call on the pitch. You guys deserve to go to victory lane. Great job. Uh, I'm speechless, man. I mean, this is the greatest day of my life. I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, it's just, it's a wonderful feeling, but I owe so much to this crew. Uh, I told everybody that we weren't going to be fast at the beginning, and uh, we'd be there when it got dark and the lights came on. It's exactly what this thing did. Uh, you know, this car is named after my fiance Brooke, and I uh, love her very much. And this is just, I mean, unbelievable feeling. But uh, you know, I just, I got to thank Rick Hendrick, Chevrolet, Dupont especially, but this crew. I mean, they made that decision. I just drove the wheels off of it, but I didn't have to drive it too hard because. They just did such an excellent job in the pits. Man, that's what wins races, uh, being smart, being there all day. We've been so unlucky lately. This is uh, this is the only way to, to make it all worthwhile. They said you've had the sock sophomore jinx all season. I know you want to put that behind you. You've done it tonight. You won one of the biggest races of all time. We don't believe in jinx, you know. We just felt like things were happening that uh, uh, we had no control over, and we just kept working hard and working hard had team meetings to get our morale back up. Man, we're ready to win some more now. This is unbelievable. Okay, get on out of there and celebrate with these people. Jeff Gordon, fantastic run for Jeff Gordon today and this entire DuPont team. Watch this, Richard. I mean, this crowd is gonna come unglued. People love this man, youngster. Yeah, they ain't they, look, they, they look looking for the heroes. Yeah, they are looking for the heroes. Yeah, they ain't none, they ain't none. I don't care what them kids are doing and doing stuff. They ain't none. So looking for someone. Well, here he is. It's a million dollar win for him. Is it? I don't care. This crowd just waiting for him to gather himself up after he's gathered this race up and step forth from this car number 24, through which he's blown to victory. There they go. <laughs> Well, I, don't think, I think he's in a situation where nobody was pulling against him. They might, not, they might be pulling for their favorite driver. I mean, like an Earnhardt fan, but they said, no, Earnhardt ain't going to win tonight. Let's jump on this kind of deal. And, and a lot of times that's what happens and probably what happened a lot tonight. 122,000 people, plus, was in the infield, paying their respects to a 22-year-old youngster originally out of California who simply loves to win. Let's meet the man he beat tonight, the great Rusty Wallace. Rusty, you were looking over your shoulder at him. What happened in those last laps that you couldn't close? There really wasn't nothing that happened. I mean, the car was really fast, but he put two on. We never dreamed he'd do it, you know. We never considered him to be the truth. We were racing the seven car. We put four tires on, went out, and our plan worked good. The seven car took four tires, but he put two, and I really thought I could run him down and catch him. But uh, 
I couldn't do it. Uh, the car ran flawless. It was perfect. It was real strong all throughout the day. Pit stops were great. I'd like to congratulate Alan Sir Jr. and the whole Penske team for the Indy win today. I was thinking about that thing, about the first 50 laps. It was wonderful, a neat deal. But uh, I'd like to thank Miller, uh, Mobile, Goodyear, uh, Bosch, everybody. I mean, we had a great run today. I told everybody this morning that the car was super strong. And I believe we led so many laps that it was unbelievable. So uh, uh, we gained a lot of points, and we didn't win, but I tried to. And you had a good, strong run with Earnhardt. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. You know, he he, he was trying to keep his lap back and uh, get his lap from me, and uh, he was burning his tires up, and I was burning my tires up trying to get around him. But, hey, all in all, 600 miles is a long way. We had a good run. Uh, just like to thank entire Team Penske. Everything went great today. Rusty Wallace keeping his chin up. Rick Benjamin. Rusty Wallace certainly had a lot to be proud of today, as did Jeff Gordon. We're told Gordon led only 13 laps, but the most important 13 at the end. Can't remember the last time we saw a driver win a major race and break out in tears and spontaneous joy in victory lane. A lot of hats off to young Jeff Gordon for his victory drive tonight. Now, a couple of awards to pass out here. The liquid wrench slickest move. We talked about other drivers perhaps qualifying. That slick move certainly goes to Jeff Gordon and Ray Evernham's crew. And then he leads for Gordon. The two-tire stop at the end really set it up. Now, we're also told that the UAW GM Teamwork Award of Excellence goes as well to Jeff Gordon's team. The Ray Evernham led Rick Hendrick Motorsports entourage uh, knocking that one off as well. We also want to tell you about the Advanced Auto Parts Pits Done Quickly Award. We thought Ricky Rudd might have a chance. That three-second stop he made late in the going for gas only. We thought that was a slick move, too, but it gets Ricky and his team the Pits Done Quickly Award tonight here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Well, lots of activity here at the Speedway for the last couple of weeks. It's capped off by young Jeff Gordon winning his first Winston Cup race tonight at the Coca-Cola 600. More in a moment.